Oh, hello. My name's Eric Morton. Welcome to the WW News Today podcast. This week, I have a very special guest. Uh, a lot of people have wanted more universal discussion on this show. A lot of people have very strong opinions on Epic Universe and the effect it's going to have on the local theme park industry. So I thought, why not bring in our biggest expert here, the head of our universal division. Please welcome Annie Wilson. Thank you. Annie, it's great to see you. It's great to see you, too. Do I, I should disclose to people why we are live today. This is the first time I've ever done a podcast live. Um, well, we've done this our third time doing this. We sat down on Friday, and we recorded a discussion live with the wigs. Yeah. Um, and about an hour and 10, hour and 15 minutes into, uh, into it, the computer crashed. The data was corrupted. The file was corrupted, and most of our conversation was lost. We were able to salvage like a four-way view, like the studio feed that uh, is live streamed to the wigs when they do this. Um, But even some of that was bad. So we said, all right, we'll salvage what we can from that. And then we recorded yesterday. Hour hour and a half into that, same thing happened. I thought, well, let's do it live then because we wouldn't have time to edit this, right? Let's go live. And what people want to talk about is um, ultimately Epic Universe, but I think we need to talk about a lot of other things leading up to it. Obviously, just in honor of your visit, I'm wearing the Jurassic Tiki shirt uh, from Park Candy. Go to uh, www.nt.link slash Park Candy. And if you use the code WDWNT, you get 15% off at checkout. Uh, this is great light material stretchy. I think they also make skirts if you're into like uh, skirts or uh, any of that type of thing. You don't want to look like a big boxy guy like me, you know. I mean, you can style those. Yeah, you can. I, I've I, seen you know, them styled. I, they I want to get um, one of those and like do a little tie in the front and have like a little tank under it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think even some of their model shots on their website have oh. have like women wearing them like tied, you know, cropped yeah, up I or like whatever. That. So yeah, I'm feeling good, look good, look good, yeah. podcast good. Isn't that what they say? Like that. <laughs> I don't know. Um. So we had all that. We went live. Um, this is interesting. It's going to be interesting territory. So from time to time, we may be able to talk to the people in the chat. But we're going to kind of stay focused a little bit because you are such a great source of universal information. And we want to squeeze all that knowledge we can out of you. Of course. Right? So, of course, there's all kinds of questions I have to ask. All right. Um, you have been to how many Universal parks? You've been to all of this, all of the domestic parks. Yeah, I've not been to any of the international ones yet. Right. So we had um, Spencer, who used to work here, and Spencer has been to the, um, you know, obviously Osaka. Tom is going to be in Osaka for the opening of a new roller coaster yeah. pretty soon. Um, Tom's been to Osaka. I have not. That is the original location of Super Nintendo World. Yes, That's that where was it the original. all started. Yeah. You've been to the other one. Maybe you can give us ideas of what we might expect when Epic Universe opens. Uh, but out of, the, out of all the parks you've been to, what is, Annie, this is just a little quiz, what is your favorite Universal park? Oh, I I got to say Islands of Adventure. Yeah. It's, it's so beautiful. I just, I love the feeling when you walk in Port of Entry. It's It just leads you into another world. I Personally, I love Islands of Adventure. Yeah, um, and I I know the answer to this. What is your favorite franchise represented at Universal? Fast and Furious. No, come on. Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, Jurassic Park, obviously, okay. which which is in Islands of Adventure. Correct. So you know that's kind of. <laughs> I guess a follow up question, two part question: What's the worst attraction at Universal, and why is it Fast and Furious Supercharged? See, that's why it's my personal favorite. Is because Fast and Furious is so bad. I mean, it's so bad. It's you, so bad. It's so bad. You can't even explain to people how bad it is. They have to see it for themselves. But there's you. There's a special place in your heart for this attraction because you were on the opening team. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it was awesome being on an opening team and attraction. It's very unfortunate. It was probably the worst attraction Universal will ever open. So I didn't feel like I got the kind of opening, grand opening 
energy that most attractions get. Yeah. But it's obviously holds a very special place in my heart because I helped create the Pat and Jamie character. So give me yeah. some spit out some lines from your Pat and Jamie. Um, banter. <laughs> Welcome to the break room, everyone. Come on in. Make yourselves at home. You guys are going to be hanging out with me for just a few. Tej is getting your ride vehicles ready. He's just putting some last minute final touches on them, you know, some lights, some music and all that. So you guys can go to the race day after party with Dom. My name's Pat. That's P-A-T. Perfect and talented. This is when nobody claps. Yes, that's what I wanted to happen. And, and right. people just stared at me blankly, and it kept going downhill. But it was great. I loved it. I, I actually loved working there. As much as the attraction is not popular, I, I loved working there. So since we're kind of doing a Universal versus Disney thing, yeah. I will tell you what I think the worst attraction at Disney World is. I, look, I have some knowledge, right? I do have a uh, Universal annual pass. I do go there often. Uh, but I'll try to represent the Disney side here and say... Our worst attraction is called Beauty and the Beast Sing Along. And it might be the worst thing that Disney's ever done. I I remember when that opened. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So I would say if we were going head to head, as horrible as Fast and Furious Supercharge is, that the Beauty and the Beast Sing Along is inferior. I would rather do Fast and Furious Supercharge because it's hilarious. Hilarious. I can't even say hilarious. It's hilariously bad, but it's hilarious. You just get angry when you watch the Beauty and the Beast sing along, right? You're like, this is bad. I think Disney wins. Okay. All right. No? Uh, You know, shows and attractions, uh, you know, because I consider the Beauty and the Beast a show. Yeah. But I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. They're probably about the same level. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you talk attractions, the worst is probably the uh, Aladdin, the flying carpets in uh, Adventureland. Aww. It's really bad. It's Aww. broken. So they've just given up and they just put tarps over two of the ride vehicles and they just fly around all day with that. And if you hang out there every now and then you just hear like a loud metal grinding, <laughs> like, can somebody please get a can at WD-40, put it on this. It'd be nice for them to take it out. They Look, they have a lot of flat spinners, right? Mm-hmm. You got to do that in an amusement park. Um, but it in particular sticks out as one. It's always in a state of disrepair. It's loud. And it's kind of in the way of everything. But I think Adventureland would be just fine without it. That, and that's the question is, would you just demolish it? And yeah. Just make that just an opener, you know, more open Put pathway? a little shop there yeah. or something. I don't know. All right. Do anything. But, dole Whip. Another Dole Whip. Second yeah, one. Yeah, just you know, two Dole locations. Whip overflow. Yeah. It's popular. A covered area. Another covered area to eat your Dole Whip. That's what they need. <laughs> it's not a bad plan. I right? like that. All right. Um, let's, just, let's just not even mess around then. Best attraction. At Universal? Yeah. Oh, that's so you tough. Have a, I can tell you're conflicted that you have a sentimental favorite yes. and you have like an actual like best ride. Yeah. And then I, there are rides that I think are good. I mean, uh, Hagrid's is incredibly impressive. The drop, the backwards, all that stuff. But I, it's not my favorite ride. It's right. not the first thing I think of. I know everyone wants to rope drop and run there and people just yeah. like plan their vacation around this ride. But really, I got to love E.T., I gotta say, ET. I, I, I. We talked about this. I think you're right. I think so. <laughs> I love Velocicoaster. It gives me that right amount of. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a certain in- t- level of anticipation and mortal fear you have when you get on that. Like, is this is this lap bar actually gonna hold me? Is this thing gonna pop loose when I'm doing a barrel roll over the water yeah. <laughs> or coming down over this top hat? Hagrid's amazing, close to the ground. I really love that. Um, Something about E.T. is so bizarre <laughs> that even though they don't always get my name right when he's talking, E.T. So if you haven't been on E.T. Adventure, which I think I assume a lot of people have, well, um, hopefully E.T. Adventure begins with you. You're in the queue. You're in this beautiful forest. It's really a great queue. It's so right? good. You're in this forest. You kind of wander around and you get on a bike. And you ride the bike, E.T.'s in the front of the bike in the basket, right, under yeah. a blanket, and you take off like you're flying, flying on a bicycle. And you go through basically the story of the film E.T., right? And then they said, why don't we add a couple of rooms to this? <laughs> um, and these rooms are like E.T.'s home planet. Yeah. And it's basically like a bizarre trip. <laughs> like I like someone has put something like spiked your food with with some kind of hallucinogen, and you're in this bizarre planet. I don't even know the name. What's what's the name of this planet? Um, 
The Green Planet. The Green Planet. <laughs> real creative. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't even know E.T.'s real name, I do know. we? No. <laughs> we talked about it. Does he have a name? But Well, everyone else does Botanicus and, I mm-hmm. mean, you know, Magdal. You know, every, everyone's got names. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> and I'm like... I, but no ET. He's yeah, just, what is his they name? just describe him by what he is. That's, I know. So I'm watching Shogun right now on Hulu, and it's the same thing. They never, the guy's name is John. Nobody calls him John. See? They call him like uh, Anglis or something, like the English guy. They call him like the heretic. <laughs> they call him everything but John. So all the nicknames. Like, like. But, but at least I know his name. I don't know E.T.'s name. Maybe it's revealed and I just haven't paid attention. You know, I wonder. Because I think the second part of the ride is supposed to be like the sequel to the first movie that the sequel never got made. So, I mean, Steven Spielberg is in the the pre-show of the ride explaining these characters to us. So yeah. he clearly had some ideas going on. And, you know, I liked it's it. It's a bizarre ride. It's <laughs> It's the only ride at Universal that I think is untouchable. People say Spider-Man. People say, you know, Hagrid's or one of those. I think this one's untouchable because it's a touchstone to the origins of the park. Uh, sort of the goes back to give you that feeling of what Universal Studios was really like when it first opened. And it is so kitschy. And, like, you feel a certain, like, like a warm blanket. Like, you feel a sense of, like, belonging with it, right? You're like, this is mine. I, am, I belong to it. It belongs to me. It's our <laughs> thing. I love E.T. adventure. And the thing is that people don't even, like, feel that way about the movie, I don't think, as much as they yeah. feel about the ride. Like, I, the movie scares me. I mean, that, that scene when E.T.'s dying, that's some trauma from when I saw it yeah. the first time. But, but people connect that, to that ride. People remember that, and they remember... Um, a Atreyu with his horse sinking into the quicksand. Yes, yes. that upsetting me. <laughs> <That's>, um, <laughs> upsetting I see I'm bringing back some horrible memories yeah, from your yeah. childhood. I hate when these things but come e. up. <laughs> and Atreyu, yeah. those, are, those are both tough moments, oh, man. Um, but Universal has a lot of these franchises that are like big blockbuster franchises that still people are like, I, I don't really remember it, right? And that goes to... <laughs> Fievel. <laughs> <laughs> well, Five Old Mousekowitz, uh, an American tale, right? There are no cats in America, and the streets are paved with cheese, which I wish were true. Um, but they have a number of these, right? Some of these were big blockbuster movies that had bad sequels, or mm. some of them were gr- made a great, like, fran- like Harry Potter, mm. $10 billion movie franchise. And so that is a huge behemoth for them in terms of an IP. Um, I, conversely, Disney has... The, the top Disney film franchise, I've got to, it has to be the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'll bet it's worth triple what the Harry Potter franchises are worth combined. Um, I'll, let's just say it's 30, 40 billion. I don't know. And I think Harry Potter's around 10 billion. Um, then you go down, Universal still has Jurassic Park, which has got to be a top 10 movie franchise of all time. Disney has Star Wars, um, a little bigger. But I think Universal has more kind of depth in the center, right? If you combine all the Pixar films into a franchise, then Pixar is big. You still, at Universal, though, would have uh, Minions as big. Fast and Furious. For reasons I do not understand. Uh, Fast and Furious is huge. Huge. Um, Fast and Furious is probably, I don't know, five or six billion dollars. It's one of the top. I don't know, maybe more. It's one of the top. Um, I I remember I looked it up because I thought, really? I I was surprised. I didn't realize that. You have um, Transformers, I'll bet, is a 5 or $10 billion franchise. I mean, yeah, I think not quite as big as Harry Potter, but there have been a lot of Transformers movies. They keep making them. I was going to say, I think there's they're a new one, good, right? They're not good, but they keep making them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, somebody's watching them. <laughs> Some, yeah, people are going. Look, DreamWorks. People, we people got... will go to the theater for something that, you know, just something they recognize, mm-hmm. right? It's like, that's what I think the Minions movies are. I don't think anybody can tell you much about Character development and storyline at Minions is just like my kids wanted to go to the movies. It was hot out, so <laughs> I dragged them to the movies, and now I, there's a however many billions of dollars the Minions franchise is. Well, they got a um, new movie coming also, out too. And also, How to Train Your Dragon. That's like a, a probably a couple billion dollars, and there we'll get to that later because they are building that epic universe. Yeah. But I mean, Universal has a lot of these like big franchises. Every now and then, you're reminded of some of their kind of. Less than top tier stuff, uh, Heathcliff and uh, <laughs> Toon Lagoon <laughs> and uh, Beetle Bailey and you know all kind of the Toon Lagoon stuff. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Jurassic Park is great, um, and some of this other stuff is great. But they had a 
I mean, all the Seuss stuff. Look, people connect with Dr. Seuss because they grew up reading it. Yeah. Right? I don't think it's a top flight. I don't think, like, the Lorax broke any box office records. <laughs> well, and I don't think people are, are planning their trip based on no, Seuss. No, I got to— I mean, it's a great land, yeah. but, you know, there are a lot of other, you know, franchises and things that people will God, say. get me a Thing 2 t-shirt, you know? <laughs> I mean, they're cute. <laughs> you know. So, no, Universal has a strength of IPs, and I don't know that they always do a great job with them. I don't know that Disney always does a great job with the materials they have, right? Mm -hmm. MCU, they don't, we don't really get to see much MCU here on the East Coast. Some more of it on the West Coast, and that was kind of a big failure. Avengers Campus, to me, is kind of a failure. Uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Man as a standalone franchise has got to be in a top ten. Um, but I, Web Slingers is awful. Yeah, it's our an awful attraction. Our Spider-Man ride is better. Than yeah, Web the Universal Spider-Man ride is absolutely better. Absolutely better than yeah. Web Slingers. There's just no like this. There's no debating. If you find someone who wants to debate you, just just walk away because you're not dealing with the person who has all their faculties, <laughs> right? It's true. So, um, with that being said, your best attraction being E.T. or something that we love the most, yeah. I think the top probably attraction that brings people there might be Velocicoaster, might be Hagrid's. Probably Hagrid's. Um, in general, the Harry Potter lands bring people. Uh, I don't know that people are like, you know, I, I, like Forbidden Journey, amazing ride. It is truly an amazing ride. I, I will never go on it again. It's just a little, it just takes it too close to the line. It takes it too close to the line. And not getting sick, but just being, just kind of making me uncomfortable for the next few hours. And I, I'm not going to put myself, I'm too old to do that. Yeah, there are rides that I'm like, if I'm going to do it, it's going to be the very end of the day because it's going to probably take me out. Right. And if it doesn't, great, but probably going to take Things me I don't, out. I don't like going backwards. So like we talked about, ex Tom and I talked about Expedition Everest on the last oh. podcast. I just. It just takes me a little bit too close to the line. The going backwards is just a little bit where when you go backwards on a mummy, it's not too bad. When you go backwards and then Hagrid's go backwards for you. Yeah. Far, it's not too bad. I feel the opposite. Like I, um, Expedition Everest, that backwards doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. uh, Hagrid's takes me pretty close because I can do Hagrid's like two times in a row. And then I'm like, uh, you're all going without me. Like I'm, I'm out because <laughs> that backwards just, I have mm -hmm. to like focus on something to like not lose it. So I don't know why the backwards and Hagrid's bothers me, but doesn't not mummy. That's weird because not, there's nothing to focus on at Expedition Everest. You're in the dark, you're in pitch black. Maybe I need to not focus on something. Yeah, because that, you know, I'm always trying to like focus on like the handlebars or something like one focal point so that when I'm going backwards, I'm like, okay, okay, just don't look around. You have, <laughs> um, I think a little, you're, you're, let's establish your credibility too for this discussion. You've been to more Disney parks than I have. Oh, yeah. I've been to all of them. You've been to every Disney park in the world, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. What's the best one? You can say it. Uh, Let it out. The Okay, the park that the best park is actually, I would say, Tokyo. Tokyo Disneyland or Tokyo Disney Sea? I like Tokyo Disneyland. Yeah. I know everyone likes Disney Sea. Disney Sea doesn't make me feel like it's Disney when I walk in. It gives me more Islands of Adventure vibes and what I think could be Epic Universe vibes, okay. you know. But I really think Tokyo Disneyland is the best park. But my favorite of all of them, I know people are going to judge me, is Hong Kong Disneyland. There's something about that tiny little park that gives it's me like this feeling. like a boutique feeling. theme park. It gives me this feeling that I don't get at any other Disney park. That no, There's no lines, no crowds. The Cast members are given stickers and candy, and they're like, oh, well, who's your favorite character? We'll find out where they stop in the parade so you know where to sit. I mean, there's just something about Hong Kong Disneyland. I had an annual pass there, and I just there was something about it that I just loved the way it made me feel. Now, it's not the best park. Did By you live means, in Hong Kong? No, I just went there a lot. <laughs> I, w I went to school in Beijing, which is why I want to go yeah. to the Beijing Universal. Yeah. That's the next big park I want to go yeah. to. You've been everywhere. I try. <laughs> You've you been were, everywhere. I don't wanna, yeah, between the two of us, we you have that half of the globe covered. I got the rest, I think. Yeah, right. We, what, I don't know if you want to talk too personal, but, but tell us some of the places you've lived. Um, well, I did uh, study abroad in Beijing. I did study abroad in uh, St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh -huh. And I used to teach English uh, to monks and orphans in Cambodia. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just a few of the places, but I, you know, I traveled a lot too, so. 
I'm going to say Petersburg, Florida, so I'm not sweating it either. No, no, <laughs> no, Russia. I, I uh, yeah, that was a that was an interesting. Do you speak time. Russian? Poorly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's easier to understand. The grammar is just like awful. Like I can understand and read it, but to s- respond back to people, I can't. Like yeah. there's it's struggle. And do you speak any any? Asian languages at all. I used to speak a lot of Chinese because I studied Chinese and Russian in college. Yeah. Um, and so I Chinese is much easier, like grammatically, but the tones to speak the tones, like I can say the words that I think I'm trying to say and they just come out wrong. Well, that happens to me speaking <laughs> English sometimes. <laughs> That's I you mean know. you heard me unable to say hilarious earlier. <laughs> That's great. You are that's the parts of the world I haven't been to. I've kind of been to, you know, I haven't been to Asia and all done a lot of Europe, Africa. Caribbean, South America, North America, um, up to from Norway down to Liberia and everywhere in between. So you have all the, you know, of China and Hong Kong and Japan and Cambodia and Russia covered. (laughs) So, you know, we could start a travel agency. Yeah. There's a theme park in Korea I went to called uh, Lottie World. Oh, I've heard of Lottie World. Yeah. And it looked just like. Disney. It's like, a fake Disney. Yeah. All the, all the Mickey hands were the arrows were Mickey hands. I'm like, mm, this looks suspicious. And we've got Lottie and Lori Raccoon who look just like Mickey and Minnie with raccoon ears. Like, it was great. <laughs> when I was a kid, Worlds of Fun in Kansas City used to have a raccoon. It had a mask, oh. uh, a um, raccoon and I think a panda. They oh. were like the mascots back then. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. Raccoons apparently are, are good mascots. Big mas- good mascots. <laughs> Um, all right, so we've estab- we've kind of established at least what your favorite ride is. Do we know what the best? What's the best one that's bringing people to the universe? Is it Velocicoaster? I think it's Hagrid's. I really think people are still coming for Hagrid's. The fact that Velocicoaster got Express sooner than Hagrid's, one reason I think is because it has a faster load time. Like yeah. that really has a better capacity. But I think people just they just run for Hagrid's. And I don't know if it's because of the Wizarding World side of it. Are these yeah. just like really big Harry Potter fans that want to get on Hagrid's? Or is it just because it's a really impressive coaster? Yeah. Um, I think that the same is true with Disney where you you can throw a few different potential rides out there is what the best ride is. A lot of people have their favorite Disney rides. Some people love Rock and Roller Coaster. I don't mm. really care for Rock and Roller. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, Same with Tower of Terror. I really love the theming of Tower of Terror. The ride experience is fine. It's good. Um, Tron Light Cycle Run, a lot of people, because it's new and it has a really awesome launch, the first 10 or 15 seconds of that ride rival the first 10 or 15 seconds of any ride I've ever been on. Um, You have Cosmic, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind, more raccoon uh, mascots involved in this, (laughs) uh, which is a fantastic, really fun ride. Um, And then of what I think is my favorite now, which is weird because I don't ever go, oh, I got a rope drop to, to ride this, is uh, Flight of Passage. Oh. So Disney has a few of them spread through the different parks. It's pretty good. I think yeah. I think we could all agree that right now at Universal, the best rides would be at Islands of Adventure. Yeah. And Universal Studios Florida is more of a partial day experience. For now. Right, for now. Yeah. For now. You have... I mean, you basically go there and you ride E.T. three or four times and you go home, right? And then, yeah. And E.T. doesn't even open until 10. So, you know. Yeah. It's got such a short amount of time to do it. <laughs> um, okay. So I want to ask you, between Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley, which is better? Oh, that's such a tough question because I think the theming in Diagon Alley is superior. But I really think Hogsmeade is amazing because it has the castle. It has more attractions. It's got you know, more going on than Diagon Alley. But I think Diagon Alley, the fact that you feel like you're in Diagon Alley, you can't see out of it, which is, I think, the goal of Epic Universe is when you're in those lands, you won't see out of them. Right. So that's a good example. That is the major criticism of Hogsmeade, right, is you're watching people ride Velocicoaster right next to you. There's a bridge right there to Jurassic Park. that The sight lines are not well planned out. Yeah. Well, it's great to eat breakfast in Hogsmeade and see Velocicoaster go by, but that's also not really immersive to the Wizarding World. Well, I'll say this about Wizarding World is that I feel, especially in Diagon Alley, it is more immersive than 
Toy Story Land oh, or then Star course. Wars Galaxy's Edge. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge started off, they really tried to say, like, okay, we're only going to call the bathroom a refresher. <laughs> and we're only going to, you know, we're going to say bright suns to everyone. Everyone's going to talk to you in this sort of, you know, familiar but vaguely, you know, in theme ways. Mm-hmm. And uh, Islands of Adventure, the merchandise, I'm not Islands of Adventure, uh, Universal Studios at Diagon Alley and and over in Hogsmeade, the stores, the merchandise is very well curated. It feels unique. Mm-hmm. There was a time, and we talked about this, and it's been erased or whatever. <laughs> there was a time at Disney, any gift shop you went into was going to have, you know, they would have some of their own stuff, but you would always have, you could always grab a Rice crispy Mickey ear thing to eat. You could always grab an autograph book, a chocolate bar. A, you know, there's like this familiar merchandise that was at every checkout counter, right, or around the average. And Universal is like, man, they're, they're not even telling me who made this. They're pretending this is really – these are really made by Birdie Bot, you know, <laughs> or whatever. And I remember going uh, – well, so Galaxy's Edge, you could buy a Coke, Sprite Diet Coke, mm-hmm. and they you could get them in like a, a thermal detonator-shaped bottle. Mm-hmm. Or you could. I don't even know if you can. Uh, I, I think you can. I haven't bought a Coke there for a while. Um, but Universal, like I ordered a Coke, and they looked at me like I was crazy – yeah, I was in a restaurant in Diagon Alley, and they're like, no, 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 that Coke is a muggle drink. We don't have that here. We have pumpkin juice or gilly water. And I'm like, really? <laughs> like, they went they went hard into it. Yeah. And so the level of immersion there, especially at Diagon Alley, is so note perfect that, you know, like, you have to respect that. You have to respect the design, even if, uh, you know, they only have one attraction in there, Gringotts, which yeah. is a really cool queue, a really cool pre-show. And an okay ride based on projections, you know, which is kind of their thing, right? For whatever reason, uh, when I think of univer- going to Universal, I do think of um, intense rides. That, so things that will appeal to someone that's between 12 and like 25, right, before you start having kids of your own. To, and then when you get older and your kids are at that age and they want to do that, then you're back into it, right? Um, but a lot of projections, right? Mm-hmm. That's a criticism of Universal, even though Disney has their share of projection rides. I feel like Universal's reputation is very much projections. I think they're trying to get away from that, though. Yeah. I think that over in the last few years that 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 was kind of what everyone Except kept saying. Except their newest ride, which is projections and guns and standing on a baggage claim belt. Yeah, but... Second worst ride there. <laughs> oh, I like Villain Con, but I, I will say... If people don't know, Villain Con, Minion Blast, you stand literally on... A winding, moving walkway. So think about the half moon shaped um, baggage belt at like your yeah. local airport, right? And you stand on that <laughs> and you just have a gun and you just shoot stuff. Yeah. But, you know. They didn't have a lot of space to do anything big there. Yeah. that that One thing is that, I mean, it replaced basically a movie, Shrek, that was on Netflix. Um you know, so it was not even something that was exclusive to the park, that it was only you could see this Shrek movie only in this attraction. Right. So not a lot of space and just taking a theater and making it into an actual like attraction, but also an attraction that has no height requirement, because that's the biggest yeah. complaint about Universal is that everything has a height requirement almost. So, not only that, you know, but also Universal has a number of rides that larger people can't fit in. Their yeah. their accessibility at Universal lags behind Disney a little bit, I would say. Yeah. Right? I know I know a guy who's not overweight, he's just tall. And he can't go on um Gringotts. He can't okay. fit in the thing. His legs are too long or something. Um I get it, right? They're a little bit more uh restrictive in there sizes and stuff. But it might also be because those rides are more intense. It is because they're more intense. You know, yeah. it's like, well, the manufacturer sets them. So, you know, if we had more family-friendly rides that, you know, were E.T. type of rides where it's like a slow-moving vehicle or things like yeah. that, then there wouldn't need to be the tighter, smaller safety restraints. So I think when you start getting into these bigger rides, that becomes more, you know, got to keep you in there. So they got to make them smaller. Can we talk about... My favorite defunct attraction at Universal. I would love to. You know what I'm going to say, right? I hope. It oh, am- I know what you're going to say. <laughs> it was in a kid zone. Yes. The Ball Factory. <laughs> yes. Did anybody here go ever go to the Ball Factory? 
If you ever watched American Gladiators back in the day and they had the big gun that fired tennis balls at people across the room, that was basically the ball factory. You go in this two-story, giant, oversized McDonald's playroom, playland. It's so good. (laughs) And it's full of pneumatic guns that shoot balls at people. And you are not only allowed to, but encouraged to shoot whoever's there, which is probably going to be kids. Hopefully. Who who (laughs) wouldn't love that opportunity? To just get back at your little loud kid for a few minutes to shoot him with a Nerf ball. It's not going to hurt him. No. But the best part is we went, I think, (laughs) I think I went there with you on, I think it was like the last day it was in operation or in the last week. Yeah. And it was a lawless thunderdome of chaos. There was nobody that worked for Universal was there to give... Two hoots about anything that was going on in there. So kids are taking, like, bags and putting them in the pneumatic thing and shooting bags up into the sky, putting <laughs> their T-shirts, blowing. rolling them up and putting them in a gun and shooting it at their brother across the room. That girl that was, like, up to her shoulder and, <laughs> in like, had her arm because something got jammed in the gun. Oh, yeah. Because you know, I think the bag was jammed in there, and she's, like, up to here trying to get it out. I'm like, oh, my God, she's going to lose her arm. It's Not to wish harm on anybody, <laughs> no. but it would have been cool to see, like, an Augustus Gloop moment <laughs> Her kid got like stuck in the tube and <laughs> fired away into the chocolate mixing room. Little cannons, like he got sent to her. the toothsome chocolate emporium and what's it called? Toothless <laughs> chocolate emporium and something feast. Oh, you're gonna be toothless eventually. In there, no. toothsome tooth toothless is an epic universe. Toothsome is, is that, that city wall. Yeah. Okay. So oh. I miss those. I, I miss the ball factory oh, so much. Me too. That was, I got introduced to it too late in life. But I think that I would probably be on a watch list if I had known it existed sooner. Because they're like, there's just a middle-aged man standing there with a beer shooting <laughs> balls at people all day long. In this thing. Oh, I would go in there like really early when they first opened. And it would just be adults in there. And I'm like, oh, yeah. this is perfect. Like, we all fit in. No children. Let's just all blast. It's great. I Oh, that is some of my best memories of Universal. And I didn't even discover it until too late, just like you. Yeah. I even I even worked a shift over in Curious George and didn't even wander into the ball factory. I didn't know what was back there. I was like, I'm not going through that curtain. I'm just going to stay out here. Kid throwing I just poop. can't believe I can't believe that like it passed muster with Universal's legal group. Like, what is this? You're like, it's just a room where people can shoot each other with balls. But maybe nobody got back there. Maybe they were like me when I worked there and they only went to where like they saw the water stuff and the buckets dumping yeah. and they're like, you know what? That's enough. It's fine. It's they're fine. walking around no. with the insurance company. They're like, yeah, we'll insure this. <laughs> yeah, right. They didn't go inside. See? <laughs> <laughs> They've seen that. They were too captivated by the nearby Fievel Mouskowitz water slide. That was such a good ride, too, that nobody knew existed. Yeah. I My favorite memory was making you ride that. <laughs> Annie made me ride the Fievel slide. It is for little kids, but... And they, perhaps... <laughs> Perhaps people my size in that raft generate a bigger splash than other people when you bought them out at the end. And it was quite a wet experience, as I recall. Oh, it was. Yeah. It was great, though. So it's no E.T. adventure, but it was it was great. No, but I can't wait to splash around in Shrek Swamp. Yeah, and that's going to be a troller coaster there where Woody Woodpecker was, right? Yeah. Is it the same roller coaster repainted? Yep. Yeah. They never even took down the track. They just left it up and Did painted they, it. Are they repainting? It has it been painted? Yeah, yeah. It's like yellow and green now. So and then the coaster vehicle is a caterpillar. It's a catter bus, but it looks like nightmare fuel. Like it's horrifying. It it's like got the this show face. nightmare fuel. No, no, oh. it's, no. That's good. Nightmare you know, fuel. They are dancing, or well, some of them are performing a new show at Epcot. I saw, I saw that. It Sunday. Yeah. yeah. How was we that? We have a video here on our I channel. I saw. I've watched the video a few times. I gotta say that because because how was it? It wasn't. How do I say it? I want to make sure that I want to make it clear that I love that there is more entertainment coming to Epcot mm-hmm. and that I was able to watch this show. And as we walked through the rest, like past creation shop and stuff, that there was more entertainment immediately following somewhere like the janitors are around the corner. Like, yeah. I like that because I think Epcot needs the entertainment. Was this the most captivating thing I've ever seen? I don't think so. I think they were limited by the amount of space that they had where they are. Yeah. So that you can only watch someone like stretch so many times, right? And they're going around on a thing like they're doing cool contortionist stuff that takes a lot of talent yeah. and a lifetime to perfect. And I appreciate that. The show might have been a little too long. Maybe okay. it's a little too long. Also, the orb that they put in, it looks like it's a little like 
shaky and she put the things on like she was going to do the handstands oh. like she does in Nightmare Fuel. Mm-hmm. And then she didn't stand on her hands because I think it was a little too unsafe. Like she yeah. judged it to be a little too unsafe. So she very professionally just did some artistic movements and stretched and did some contortionist stuff. Um, no, I think it's great. I hope they keep it. It looks like it's going to be here through June. Um, and keep trying out new entertainment stuff. Yeah. Also, they have a new roaming musician at Restaurant Asaurus. Oh, I saw that too. And I think it's like the people that used to be. There's a guy named Sandro that was on Galactic Star Cruiser. It's like oh. a, you know, an improvisational musician. I think it's like the same type of deal. So that's great. That's more awesome. entertainment. I, I will never criticize them for adding more entertainment. Yeah, they, I say that, and I'm like, except for the Beauty and the Beast sing along. <laughs> you know, um, I got to say, one of my favorite Epcot entertainment ever was in the 90s and it was um the christos and i know no one's probably ever going to remember that but it was like a mom and her two sons and they dressed up as aliens and they like crawled out of the bushes and then they did all these acrobatic things do you not remember that a mom and her two sons. yeah they dressed as aliens they were called the christos Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, like, came out and they had, like, the alien faces on and, like, the leotards were all shiny in different colors. And they would go out into a platform and they would do acrobatic, um, like, hand balancing. (laughs) And that was one of my favorite, favorite shows at Epcot. And and nobody probably will ever remember it. I would be surprised if someone remembers this comment, please. (laughs) I I mean, you're, you're, like, knocking some cobwebs loose in my mind and I'm, like, have these... Vague memories of this. Like in front of the fountain. Yeah. But on the backside, like yeah. they came out from where like Club Cool used to be with when it used to be yeah. like the um, snowy thing. Ice you went Station through. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, that, see how, that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. That's what I'm like, oh, I'm trying to. I know we're talking Universal, so I'm like digging some cobwebs out of the way to find these uh, Disney memories. But but the new show gave me that kind of vibe. Now, I don't really like the. The apparatus thing they're on, like, I don't think they correct, really need correct. it. I think they're impressive enough without that spinning thing, personally. I think they don't even need that. Like, I think they just need a little platform, and they could have at it, and it would be great. That's my personal opinion, yeah. but I am very happy to see more entertainment, because that's what all these parks need. Is yeah, We always talk about rides. Give me something to just look at. and uh, Just to be, when the crowds are bad, and you can't get on rides, you want to feel like you didn't waste your money. Right. So, by being entertained by things... You're happy. You, I mean, Sunday they also had the Pointer Sisters there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Or, or whoever. I don't know how many of the Pointer Sisters are remaining, unfortunately. I, oh. I think some of them passed away. But, oh. um, yeah, the point you can watch the Pointer. Like, Epcot <laughs> has some the bands. and yeah. they have, um Oh, yeah. So then there's Mariachi Cobra right there. We saw a band playing in the stage outside of Germany. Like the little tiny oh, stage. Oh, yes, I love that. But there was that. like a real band that. playing. I love them. Then, of course, we had brunch at the beer garden. Oh, yeah. Or, or lunch, I guess, because. It's close enough. Because they don't bill it as a brunch. But it was around brunch time, and it was a Sunday. So <laughs> I went there, and there's the band there. So I like, you know, all the entertainment and the music and yeah. all that kind of vibe. It's great. It's getting better. Nature is healing. World world nature is healing. <laughs> Unfortunately, I feel like Disney's healing and Universal's over here kind of trimming their yeah, entertainment Yeah, conversely, left Universal has been cutting a lot of entertainment options yeah. uh, and staffing in hours. Yeah, and I read a comment. Somebody made a comment, and I don't know who it was, but they said to to beat Disney, Universal had to become Disney. So, mm-hmm. you know, there was such a long period of time where we were complaining about Disney things, about cutting things and not bringing things back. And mm-hmm. now it's like, oh, here we've got this new show. And here we are like, buy shows that are gone now at Universal, but we're getting a new park, right? It sounds so, like something bye. Bane would say, like, I was, you merely adapted to the dark. I was born in the dark, molded by it, or whatever. Yeah. Like, Disney will be the teacher now. We'll show you how this game is done where you cut the offerings and stuff. So, yeah, right? <laughs> uh no, so I think Universal is is a great time. I think it's worth having an annual pass. It's fairly affordable. Uh, with the tier I have, I just have the two parks. I don't bother with the water park. I don't do that with my Disney pass either. Um, but one area that I think Universal has really, really outshined Disney um, is Halloween Horror Nights. Oh, yeah. For a separate after-hours ticketed event, nothing Disney does is close to this in terms of the risk they take, the kind of edgy feel the um like this is not something you're going to bring your little kids to right no. you know they're not coming to halloween horror nights it's too 
It's not for them. It's not designed for them. It's loud, heavy metal music playing in the streets. It's people who are trying to scare you. It is a, a lot of waiting in line. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, tons of food offerings. It is actually worth the money that you spend for an active hours, uh, af- after hours event. I feel like whenever I go to a Disney after hours event, I get it. There are people that really like having their own special parade and their own special, like, Me, fireworks show and a couple little characters. You basically spend up to $200 to get, like, a bag of free candy, right? <laughs> and um, the Christmas party scene is the same formula, right? Yeah. New parade, new show, fireworks, free candy or free stuff. Um, I just feel like Halloween Horror Nights is more has more repeatability and it's an after hours event separately ticketed that has its own annual pass. Yeah. <laughs> which is also really cool. Right. Yeah. And you can get that annual pass to it uh, or at least one level of it for like pri- you can go probably 10 times or more for the price of one uh, Mickey's not so scary Halloween party ticket. Oh yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Those party so, tickets are insane. They're like, uh, they could be two hundred dollars, almost $200. And the park is packed. The and, park yeah. is packed. I mean, to do the same things, and, and I oof, I don't think that's a very good value over at Disney as much as I love mm-hmm. Not So Scary. I love Not So Scary, but Halloween Horror Nights is way better value, and, and but it's a completely different level. Like, Well, here's the thing. There are people that, uh, including Lee, my girlfriend, hi, Lee, if you're watching, um, she, doesn't, she doesn't like being scared. She doesn't like the awkward... Uh, Interaction between someone that's trying to scare you and someone that doesn't want to be scared, mm-hmm. and how often the person that's trying to scare you when they find somebody who is easily scared starts pushing it a little more and yeah. makes it worse. Uh, so that should, it's not her thing, right? I don't care about. I don't think. I don't think Halloween Horror Nights is scary because they don't pulse you through the house. Yeah, right. You just walk through. They don't leave a space between groups, so there's not a single surprise. I, I, that's not why I go. I don't go to get scared. Some people get scared. You might get a good jump scare every now and then. I go because the set design is amazing. That's the truth. <laughs> and this goes back to my first Halloween Horror Nights was in 2002. And it was at Islands of Adventure. And I think they might have had four or five houses tops. I don't remember what the theme was. I don't remember much. I remember how bad the Fear Factor <laughs> haunted house was. It's maybe not just... Professional haunted houses, even if you bring in like the your local chapter of the Kiwanis Club or whatever, <laughs> it is worse than that. It was the worst haunted house I've ever been to. <laughs> and to see their evolution now to these yeah. to up to mm-hmm. ten houses that are all except the ones in the tents, Hollywood quality sets, like awe inspiring design. Mm-hmm. Um I, it doesn't matter who jumps out to scare me. I'm just impressed looking around at what they built. Yeah. And they do something that you could never do without the big budget that Universal has access oh, to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So don't forget they have that cable company money. <laughs> like, you know, they're getting money every month from everybody. <laughs> That's what they think. <laughs> and everyone hates their cable company. So, well, people go, oh, I cut the cord. I was like, really? How do you connect to the Internet? <laughs> Through my cable company. Uh-huh. <laughs> And they've all rebranded, right? Because every time that there's a poll of who are the most hated businesses in America, it's always like Comcast, Charter, Time Warner, like all these cable companies, right? So they <laughs> what they've done is they rebranded. So now Comcast is like, we're not Comcast, we're Xfinity. Call us for internet and all this entertainment. And then Charter was like, that's a great idea. We're going to tell everyone that we're called Spectrum now. And it just throws people's scent off enough that now, like, half of the votes go towards Spectrum being the worst company and half go to Charter so they're not on the list anymore. They're like, oh, we've we've tricked everyone into us not being the most hated company in America. That's smart. Because they, they, they didn't see our name on the list because they were looking for Charter but all, or they were looking for Spectrum, but we were hiding under Charter. <laughs> That's what I think. I think. So – it's I think a, I told you before thought, what yeah. I think Universal should do is just lean into your cable company roots. And so you're if you have like a fast pass type of offering, it's like, oh, I'll be there Saturday. You just as the customer, you're like, hey, Universal uh, Comcast, I'll be there Saturday sometime between 12 and 5. And then they have to let you on the ride when you get there. What do you think? Maybe that'll be Epic Universe. Be like, hey, yeah. I'll be there Saturday between 12 and 5. Um, I want to talk about Epic Universe. But first, 
I think we're going to just take a quick little break and a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Hollywood, 1989. Amid the glitz and the glitter of a bustling young Disney world at the height of its golden age, the Disney MGM Studios was a star in its own right, a beacon for the show business elite. Then, something happened that changed all that. The time is now to celebrate 35 years of Disney's Hollywood Studios with the largest ever in-person gathering of those who created its magic. The Imagineers who brought you the great movie ride. Muppet Vision 3D. And of course, as you may recognize, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror will present never before seen stories and artwork from the Hollywood that never was, but always will be. This event is somewhat unique in that it will offer a meet and greet and autograph session, as well as two days of star-studded panels and presentations. We invite you, if you dare, to register at stage89.com to attend this event either in person or via streaming, or just to get more information. And all event proceeds travel directly to Give Kids the World Village. there you have it. Stage 89. Go to stage89.com for more details. We have uh, a lot of people signed up for the streaming only ticket. I'm very excited slash terrified for this event. So (laughs) terrified because there's plenty of work left to do to prepare for the event. Of course. (laughs) And excited because what an amazing group of guests. What an amazing experience this is going to be. I worked Uh, at Hollywood Studios. I have a lot. Did you not? (laughs) Where else have you, can we, should we just list off your employment history? No, and you I don't want give people, all your bona fides? I don't want people to know too much about. <laughs> was there a Fast and Furious ride that they asked you to open up at Hollywood Studios? No, unfortunately. I thought I was going to work at the Tower of Terror, but they put me at Fantasmic. And 10 years before that, they put me on Sunset so close, and I worked at Sunset Ranch Market back when those costumes used to be striped. That's how old I am. Wow. <laughs> 2004. Wow. Well, that's great. I think I want to talk about Epic Universe, though. We will flip flop back and forth to a couple things. I'm all right. Right? Because we could talk about, I'll talk about Halloween Horror Nights all day long with you. <laughs> uh, but we're going to go to Epic Universe. Maybe they'll have, maybe they'll move Halloween Horror Nights to Epic Universe. Probably never. They probably I don't never think would. so. I think they need people to go to the other park. I'm like, that, we, I mean, we talked about how USF is kind of like a half day park almost at this yeah. point. There's not much there. So it's kind of like the shell of a theme park that they put Halloween stuff in. Yeah. So I, I guess we'll start with the overview. They decided to build a third gate, even though it's not physically connected to their property, which is, I mean, what else are you going to do? You're either going to build park or you're not. You don't have any yeah. more room. Right, unless you get rid of all your backstage parking and maybe knock down Dr. Phillips High School or something there. Or lose things. That's the other thing. Is like yeah. they could have taken things get away from Get rid of Men in Black. Us. It's terrible. Oh, um, never. No. <laughs> I love Men in Black. We talked about this. I just don't, What's the penalty of Men in Black? Oh, it spins. It's just like the old Dr. Seuss ride apparently used to spin. I didn't know that yeah. it stopped spinning because it, once it spun, I never went on it again. It um, you have also mentioned in, um, the Sky Trolley. There are two attractions at Universal that I've never been on. What are they? I think Sky Trolley. Uh, well, not counting Toronto on flyers, okay. which I'm not allowed on unless I have it. If unless I somebody loans me their child, uh, and Doctor Doom. Oh, okay. So I mean, I've been on a million amusement park Doctor Doom tripe drop right there. This is just something they probably bought, put together in a couple days, and threw up there. <laughs> right? It's not a. It's not a unique to Universal type attraction. No, no. Um, and I have been on the bilge barges before, oh. but for whatever reason, they had like the water toned down when I was on it, and we didn't get oh. wet at all. 
Which You're lucky. I'm probably the only person in history to not get wet on that ride. Yeah, no, that one will soak you. That's yeah. bad. <laughs> well, Epic Universe is attempting to jump into this fray. And right now, I think most people that go to Universal, what do you think? They plan like a long weekend or two or three days. They're going to go yeah. hit a water park, kick around City Walk, um, spend not quite a full day at Universal Studios Florida, hop over to Islands of Adventure one day, and then go to Islands of Adventure for a full day the next day or something, something along those lines, mm-hmm. right? So they're hoping then to extend this trip that they take to eat up a, a day or two more. Right. Uh, yeah, I think I think um, they intend it to be like almost yeah. like a week long trip. Yeah, they're trying to make Universal like a week long experience, kind of like yeah. people going on their Disney thing. Yeah. So I think the first question in people's mind is: Is this going? And I'm sure they've done market research and they're confident in their predictions. But I'm also pretty sure that Disney, um, on their side, has also done market predictions and uh, has helped that shape their actions too. Uh, one of them could be right and one could be wrong. They could both be wrong or they could both be right. I don't. I don't really know. That's why these people are like, you know, making tons of money somewhere, New York City or something, and I'm recording this podcast for the third time in four days. <laughs> but um, the qu- the first question then is, are they going to take a chunk out of Disney, or are they going to take a chunk out of their own, or are they going to ease some of the attendance of their own parks? It, that's a really, really tough question. I... I know they're going to pull a lot of people from Disney because Mm -hmm. if you're a Disney fan, you love Disney. You're going to come here for Disney. But even if you never cared about Universal, there's going to be a curiosity about a brand new park. There has not been a brand new park in so long that there's going to be that, well, let's check this out on our Disney vacation. So I think that there will be people that are pulled. forgetting about Peppa Pig theme park? (laughs) No, I love Peppa Pig. Okay. My cat loves Peppa Pig. Yeah, I just wanted so, to make sure you didn't forget one of the one of the sorry. juggernaut theme parks that I'm opened sorry, in the area in the I last did, couple I, of years. I did forget. I'm sorry. Okay, one of <laughs> Universal and Disney have not opened a new park in a long time. All right, I feel better now. Yeah. All right, but I think that there are going to be people that have their Disney vacation that are going to be curious and go, and then I think there are going to be people that were not planning a vacation that will take a vacation to Florida. Just for Epic Universe. So that's what I think is going to happen, is that it's going to increase tourism to Central Florida. It's not necessarily going to lower the number of people attending Disney. No. I think it's going to create a larger number of people visiting, and it's going to increase the number of people visiting Universal. And so Disney. In that, yeah, and potentially Disney, yeah. too. So in that sense, Disney might be taking the stance that's like, but because the, a common criticism is like, hey, it took Disney five years to build a roller coaster. Meanwhile, Universal's building a whole theme park. Yeah. Right? That's a valid criticism. The time it takes Disney to do stuff. Like, how long did it take Universal to create Villain Con Minion Blast? A few months? Uh, yeah. I mean, it was pretty How long quick. was it under construction? I, uh, Six months? Maybe? Tops? No, I think it was about a year. Was it that much? Yeah. It wasn't long. It was not long. It no. wasn't it wasn't long by today's and, and theme park standards of announcement to opening. And I think they right? uh, I think time took, you know, it took more time because they were trying to mm. figure out the system with the blasters and stuff because if it had just yeah. been like a screen ride it would have been a lot faster. No, it's not a good ride or Maybe. attraction. They're experimenting. But they still launched it. Velocicoaster obviously is like you hire a company, it's an outdoor roller coaster, all the parts can be made off site and come in and they just snap them together and it's it didn't take long to build Velocicoaster either. No. They're not having to build a gravity building like you build for Tron or for mm-hmm. Guardians, even though I would say the time it took to build Tron and Guardians is ridiculous. Right? So they Universal generally speaking has the appearance of being quicker, more nimble able to build these things. I have a question though real quick. Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. But does do Tron and Guardians close in bad weather? Because they're indoor coasters, right? They're covered. So they're open. Which yeah. is the the negative thing about Universal is so many of the outdoor things like Velocicoaster and Hagrid's, as soon as like there's a little bit of lightning in the area, yeah. it's down. Yeah. So that's the that's the downside. Sorry, I just Yeah, no, that's you know, true. That's, that's a the, good reason to build a ride indoors in Florida, right? That's what I was thinking is yeah, there's a lot of speed behind these coasters that are outdoors, but I also think there's an opportunity to sort of do more indoors where you can really control what people are seeing and what mm. they're not. I think that's one of the failures of Cosmic Rewind is they had all this blessing of all this space indoors, and they basically just projected stars on everything, right? There's a few physical props here and there, but it, there could have been more. Um, Tron, 
I mean, you're flying through gates. They're, it's not a whole lot. I mean, Tron, the ride becomes less and less exciting the longer, <laughs> right? You yeah. go, you launch, and you're like, this is amazing, this is amazing, this is amazing. You go outside, this is awesome, this is awesome. And, and you it, go inside, and you're like, is this over yet? My neck is getting sore. It's like a, <laughs> like a baby rock and roller coaster. Like, that's how I feel like, because yeah. it's just like some little stuff inside, but it doesn't really You don't get to go through a go. donut, though. You just go no. through something called like an energy gate. So I'm like, it's, yeah. it's kind of. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I think before we get into the specifics of the park, just an over a general thing is, I think it will bring more people here. Obviously, if you're a Harry Potter person, you gotta go. You gotta go because there's gonna be a new. There's gonna be a new Harry Potter land. Yeah. Right. So you don't want to be the one that's only gone to two of these. You gotta go to all three of them in Orlando. <laughs> right. Right. And so, I think that's gonna be a big thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a, a big draw. I don't necessarily believe that an average a family that goes to Disney every year anyway. I doubt that they're like. Let's just not go to Disney. No. Let's go to Uni- – there's a percentage of this that will be true, right, that people do do that. But, like, by and large, I think that Disney's reaction to the theme park being built has kind of been like, oh, we're just going to do our thing. Yeah. Right? I, the same thing happened, like, 10 years ago or more. They're like, hey, we're building Harry Potter stuff over at Universal. And Disney's like, well, we're spending billions of dollars, but what we're spending it on is, like – uh backbone and cell phone stuff and uh, internet connectivity. And remember, the, the Wi-Fi used to be so bad in the parks, and the cell phone service was even worse. But I'm sure they got the carriers to chip in to do that. But it used to be like you go to Epcot and your phone would be dead in half a day, right? Uh, they did all this stuff because they knew, like, they wanted to do things where that you can open your door with your magic band and a lot of the mm-hmm. magic band stuff. So Disney, I feel like at the time when Universal was investing in Harry Potter, Disney was investing more in infrastructure and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Plus they were, they, I mean, Pandora, World of Avatar and all that kind of stuff was underway. Yeah. Um, so it's not a surprise to me that Disney's response to them building a whole new theme park is like, meh, <laughs> like ignore it. Because I think there's a chance that Disney could actually be a beneficiary to this. I think it could increase tourism in Central Florida overall. Look what Orlando Airport even now is like ever, almost every week, every any holiday weekend on the news, they're like, this will be the highest traffic day in MCO history. Is that they're doing? They, they already built a new terminal and it's not enough. Mm-hmm. That was an airport that I think was designed for like 25 million people a year and it's getting like 65 million people a year. So uh, Central Florida tourism is somewhat limited by the available gates at the airport uh, more than it is by, like, things to do. But that's why I think we added the train, like the Bright Line and yeah. stuff. It's like, let's get people here, get them here, and increase the tourism. But I really think Disney is going to benefit from Epic Universe. I don't, I don't think it's going to hurt them. I think there are going to be people that will take a trip to Orlando that— for Epic Universe, and while they're here, they're going to go to Disney because they're Disney fans or because, you know, Disney is just Disney. I mean, there's really... I just think the odds that Disney's theme park revenue goes down after Epic Universe opens is not good. I think it, they will. their revenue will continue to uh, be at least flat and probably growing quite a bit. Yeah. I don't think they're going to miss people that, you know, if you come down here for a week for Disney and you go, okay, well, we're going to do two days at Epic Universe... You know, those two days that you don't go to that Disney park, someone else is going to go to that Disney park. They're not, it's not like that spot isn't going to be filled. I think they'll right. just, other people will say, oh, well, everyone's at Epic Universe. Let's go to Disney if it's quieter. Or I think it's like good that. to have these things. I, my biggest, like, thing about Epic Universe is it's separated from the property. So it's out kind of, I won't call it in the middle of nowhere. It's nearby. Yeah. You have to go through, like, some undesirable, <laughs> like, it's not a blighted area that you have to go through, but it's like you're going to drive. It's like if, if Animal Kingdom were down 192 from Disney. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. It's T-shirt shops and IHOPs and people sitting outside of a 7-Eleven. And, you know, it's you're going to have to go past that. You're going to drive past that to, to do it. So it's unfortunate that they the parks are not physically connected. Yeah. Because now even the Harry Potter stuff, you kind of tell a story. The story can be, if you want to make the story like this, that you're going off, you're sending your kids off, you got your two kids with you, right? And you're sending them off to Hogwarts. So you go to Diagon Alley and you like go school shopping, right? You get your robe and you get your wand and you get 
some birdie bots beans <laughs> and you get some ice cream or whatever and then you hop on the Hogwarts Express and then you go to Hogsmeade. That is kind of a logical way that that story can progress if someone chooses to do it like mm-hmm. that with their family, if they're into that sort of yeah. thing. Now it's like you do all this and then you're like, and then I'm going to drive past the gift shop <laughs> and then we will fly on a hippogriff <laughs> that is my, you know, Dodge Caravan <laughs> and we'll go past, you know, the, the payday loan place, the pawn shop. And yeah, right. this hotel that really needs to be knocked down, <laughs> and we'll go to the to the Ministry of Magic. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so that part's a little like, eh. You had a good idea, though. I did. <laughs> Tell everyone your good idea. I think that they need to have the transportation be the night bus and have the windows like on the Hogwarts Express because you don't realize you're just like going over backstage. Like if those windows, you could see yeah. the team member parking, parking garage. Parking. Yeah, you know, like the so. You know, having the windows on the night bus of some something else happening while you're going through. Yeah, Orlando. but you don't know how long that trip could be. That could be that could be a traffic jam. <laughs> you could be sitting on the night bus for like an hour. Well, it could be a long loop. I mean, you, yeah, that you would know. get a little old. Not being able to look outside, well, I might get a little claustrophobic after well, a while. What if they build their own bus lane to the park so that there so is no traffic? So that's what I think they're going to lobby for. I there do was too. there has been some money set aside for transportation in that area. That's what I think. So if they get like some sort of um, like the Disney Springs buses. That's what I was getting. If they at. get something like that, yeah, maybe they're probably not going to have a train though. Probably just going to be a bus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least at first. Not a Fast and Furious bus, I hope. <laughs> now you would forgive a layperson for. Oh, Jake is showing the uh, showed the graphic of the. Sorry, Ooh. I'm a little late on that. There we go. There's the map. So you got to get yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking at. You got to get from one side to the other. You got to go yeah. across I-4. Well, we drove it. I drove it, um, and I had my friend film out the window. So <laughs> we have the drive there. I'm going to I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. Yeah. Are you going to put it on, like, TikTok? Uh, I think I'm going to put it on YouTube, but I might do a TikTok, too. Yeah, do it, do it on uh, YouTube, but do a TikTok, and then tell people where they can find us on TikTok. Ah, Universal Parks News Today. <laughs> Universal Parks News Today. That's yeah. our sister channel. Yeah. Uh, Annie has a lot of great content over there on the YouTube channel. Thank you. Obviously, your TikTok, you are a TikTok specialist. <laughs> your TikToks are amazing. Thank like, you. Like, they're not like anybody else's successful TikToks. They're your own. They're not like, hey, everybody, did you know that there's this <laughs> special hidden treat at Walt Disney World? It's not like that at all. It's like uh, organic. It's very natural, right? You showed Shrek 4D closing and played like Hallelujah and got 20 million people watching it, sending their crying emojis and stuff. Yeah. You did the, my favorite is your interaction with the Grinch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love so, the Grinch. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that interaction Thank where you're just like, hey, and he's like, what are you doing here? Where's your family? And you're like, oh, I don't have a family. What's your name? And he's like, an orphan named Annie. You know, yeah. I love it. It worked out so good. It was so it's good. Like 20 million people watched it. Yeah. Probably. I love that. You're famous. I try. <laughs> the parks are famous. The Grinch is famous. They were watching the Grinch. Nobody cared about me. <laughs> but that's why I like I like to show the parks. You know, that's that's what I'm there for. The parks are the star, not me. So. Yeah, um, I think that the transfer. I don't think. I don't necessarily think people are going to be saying I'm going to spend my morning at, at Universal Studios Florida. I'm going to hop to Islands of Adventure. Then I'm going to hop to Epic uh, until. People have been to Epic a lot, and the the, the locals. Yeah. It's going to be a pain in the butt to park hop because you're going to like, where did I park my car? It's time for me to leave, and you don't like. You are going to have valet there? Are they? Here's what I want to know: Is <laughs> Epic Universe going to have nighttime spectaculars? Because one area where Disney dominates Universal is Universal's nighttime shows are hot garbage. I could create that in my backyard with a sprinkler system and a projector, and. I'm sorry, they're they're bad. Now sometimes they'll do the thing at Hogwarts Castle where they yeah, that's kind of cool. But, but even our Hogwarts general, isn't as good as the Hollywood one. The no. Hollywood one has drones. Ours doesn't have drones. Yeah, I cried when I watched the Hollywood one. There was a kid crying in the video, but I was crying at home too. <laughs> you know, watching. Yeah. So nighttime spectaculars are a thing there. Yeah, they are actually. Um, they've got like an, a big thing built with like seats around it, so it looks like. I don't want to say phantasmic vibes of like their seating for the nighttime show, but mm-hmm. that's so much 
better to be seated for a nighttime show than to be standing with, you know, somebody puts their kids on their shoulders right in front of you after you've been standing there for four hours. You know, that's uh, that's my Adam thoughts. said in the chat that they're building their own bus line. It's been announced with electric buses. So. Oh, OK, cool. Good. See, I, I knew I'd heard it, but I didn't know if it was fact yet. So sometimes I hear things that I don't want to fact it. I know yeah. a lot of things that you know that are not fact yet that I know. will be fact soon. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I I try to only write rumors that are facts. <laughs> so Epic Universe was announced, and the CEO of Universal went up and said, the last time I checked, a universe is bigger than a world. So that tells me that what he is planning is that this park is bigger than Disney World, which is demonstrably untrue. But I... Get it, right? You want to say something hyperbolic to get people's attention. Mm. The idea is they're pulling out all the stops, and this is going to be the theme park to compare any other theme park in the world to. Yeah. This is going to be the greatest theme park in the world. I, That's what they're saying, right? I hope so. <laughs> I mean, right now, I don't know what the greatest theme park in the world is. There are pieces of it in different places all over the world that put, when put together would be great. Some people would say it's Cedar Point, you know, with all their roller coasters and <laughs> all their records of – Nobody's ever built a roller coaster that's bigger and louder and faster and this is true. Creates more vomit than they don't look safe though. <laughs> I've been there. I don't yeah. I don't ride those rides. I'll do Gemini so I can high five people because I worked attractions for so long where you gotta e stop if people touch and Gemini it's just like, Hey, we're doing this. It's fine. <laughs> um so we expect this to be big. We expect yeah. them to pull out all the stops and Comcast has so much money it should be Perfectly executed, right? But it's also got a lot to do with the fact that, you know, a lot of these theme parks that we love have been, were built so long ago that the pathways are tiny. I mean, we, a few years ago, they oh, had Disneyland. to Disneyland. Yeah. And, and a few years ago, they had to expand the pathways along the side of Cinderella's Castle um, in uh, Magic yeah. Kingdom and things yeah. like that. So we've seen where they're like, oh, we're, uh, the, the people coming here, there's more people than space, so we've got to, like, widen pathways or add new things. Whereas you've got Epic Universe that goes, okay, we know what the average attendance is of a theme park, and we know that there are tight spaces, like in Hogsmeade, where you where that snowman is, where you're going towards the castle, where you come around the Hogsmeade's corner. Hogsmeade's a disaster crowd-wise. absolutely is, but that's the thing is that now we know— this is a disaster. Or you see Diagon Alley where they're all just, it's just packed full of people with their phones up waiting for the dragon. And so maybe Epic Universe, they go, okay, we need more space. We need more here. This we're, we're, they, they have tons you know. of land there. So, yeah. yeah, you would think that that won't be a problem. That's, then that's what right. I'm thinking is that, you know, rather than these choky spots throughout these older parks, mm -hmm. we know, okay, we need open spaces. We need places for guests to be able to hang out. Like Celestial Park is like, you know, kind of just like, it's got attractions in it, but it seems like it's going to be like a park kind of vibe. Right. So uh, we'll start there. Celestial Park is going to be the, the nerve center of the park, the hub, so to speak, yes. right? So you're going to go into Celestial Park, and there's going to be areas for to sit on the grass, we think, and lounge about and yeah. hang out like it's just like a, your local park, a nice, pleasant place. It's themed after um, the way that I like to put it is kind of, I don't want to say steampunk. But like a sort of industrial retro vision of like celestial stuff, <laughs> right? So yeah. uh, a chandelier that I looked at recently that was supposed to represent the universe is like metal with cogs and stuff with little planets and stuff like that. That's what I picture when I think of mm -hmm. celestial park, sort of a um, sort of a steampunky Victorian or even Art Deco vision of. Like futuristic space stuff. Yeah. Is that fair? Is that? Yeah. Well, it's the universe. Yeah. You know, I mean, so. <laughs> yeah, you got to travel through the universe. <laughs> you know. So, um, what they've done then is uh, from a celestial park, they've created these uh, black hole portals that take you to these other universes that have been discovered throughout. Uh, yeah. Throughout the vast expanse of space. Yeah, so that's like how you're transported to these other worlds through the Kronos, which mm -hmm. controls all that. So it looks kind of like the Bifrost from Thor, right? <laughs> I don't know what that no. is. No, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, never mind. <laughs> missed that one. <laughs> somebody, somebody will hopefully agree with me. Maybe not. <laughs> People often don't agree with me. Um, but yeah, it's the main hub of the park. There will be. Oh, there's where the show is. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the big um, water. 
looking round thing. Uh, yeah. I'm not good at describing things. Sorry. That's the splash pad? <laughs> um, no, I think the splash pad was next to okay. it. So, but it's good. Like they're building the seats around where yeah. the nighttime show is. And I really think, oh, look at the carousel. That's the Constellation Carousel. Yeah. See, are we going to get sick on that? Who knows? <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> um, but anyway, this area is going to have three attractions, we think. Starfall yeah. Racers, we actually yeah. know quite a bit about. Starfall yeah. Racers is a uh, dual track racing coaster, and we have seen them uh, testing yeah. trains and stuff on there, yeah. De- testing the brake zones. I don't know if they've done envelope testing yet, but in general, f- they're doing a lot of, like, like the coaster is, itself, is, as far as I could tell, is built. Yeah. The roller coaster exists. They, the things that remain are sort of theming elements, uh, any buildings or structures that are nearby or that cover portions of the track. Um, Landscaping, Trees, yeah. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But the actual ride is done. Yeah. Save the te- they should probably test it. But well, they've got yeah. one going. I haven't seen two at once. That that's yeah. what I'm going to be curious about is seeing two at once go. Because it's a like you said a dueling racing coaster, and I just I can't wait to see this. I'm not even excited about riding the coaster because I don't really like coasters. And y'all left me for Velocicoaster on opening day. Everybody took off and got on the first vehicle and left me behind, and I That's rode by true. myself. That's not true. Who was behind me? Me. <laughs> oh, you were behind me. So. Opening day of Velocicoaster for pass holder previews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is what you're talking about, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was the first person in line on accident. We kind of wandered up, and then they're like, come on across the bridge. And we did, and then, boom, I'm the first person. Mm-hmm. And I have uh, Axel was with us, I yeah. think, and whoever else. I was live streaming. If you remember, I was live streaming yes, at the time. I forgot about that. So <laughs> they let us in eventually after a few hours. And I'm live streaming, so what I'm trying to do is show people all the little show elements in there. And here's look at this light, and look at this thing, and look at the you know test vehicle that you can sit in, and look at all this stuff. So everybody else went past me, yeah. right, to go get on the actual ride. Then I get there, I'm like, well, I'm live streaming, and people are going to want to know my thoughts, but I don't want to kill the stream. But I can't take my <laughs> phone on the ride because Velocicoaster, if you don't know, they make you get a locker and put everything everything away. Yeah. So while I was live, I put my phone in a locker, and I went and I rode Velocicoaster. I came back. I got my stuff out of the locker. I looked. The live stream is still live, and there's like 300 people that are have been sitting in the locker the whole time, oh, like in the darkness chatting. while I rode a roller coaster, and they were still there. Yeah. I loved it. That was, yeah. The, I, I but yeah, I didn't. I didn't abandon you. I think. I think I got abandoned on that day. I got abandoned too. I. I remember. I was taking pictures and stuff, and then when I got up there, I was like, "Where is everybody? They left me." And I was like, ready to cry. And the team member was like, "No, you're gonna don't love cry, it. Annie." I <laughs> know. I'm just like, ah, uh, but I'm so scared. <laughs> it was great yeah. though. Um, so maybe Starfall Racers will be the Velocicoaster of this park. I believe it is supposed to be like Velocicoaster. Do you want to get into the experience a little bit? Yeah, let's talk about okay. it. Okay. So you're going to be uh, – you're. it's a launch coaster. Um, you're going to be – Starfall Racers – Starfall is not an actual like IP they have as yeah. of right now. It is just themed after kind of like comets and uh, heavenly bodies shooting across the sky, I guess you could say. There's going to be a um, Back to the Future reference on them. Yep. I think there's a – uh, what's the symbol? What's the? I can't think of the Plutonium word. Plutonium symbol. No, the um. <laughs> don't. I, we'll get back to uh, that. Yeah, sorry. So uh, each side is uh, 133 feet tall at its highest. Flux capacitor. Flux capacitor. <laughs> it came back to me. Sorry. So keep going. <laughs> it's going to be about a mile long. Um, I don't actually know how. Long the experiences, we can calculate if the thing is going to travel about 55 miles an hour, which is what we think. It's about a minute, a little longer, assuming you're at full speed most of the time. Um, so it's going to um, have a celestial spin element. We love the spins That means here. the tracks invert around each other while rising and falling. The top speed, meanwhile, will be reached using a pair of linear motor launches on each side. They'll run up to four trains on each track. Oh, nice. Uh, given that the maintenance base can hold eight sets. Each train will be made up of five cars where riders sit in two rows of two for a total of 20 passengers. While the ride structure will not display any lighting at night, 
The trains will include onboard audio and lights, making the illuminated ride vehicles appear as comets in the night sky. That's going to be the coolest part. I mean, they kind of do that with Rip Ride Rocket now, right? The vehicles are lit up. So you see those vehicles even if you can't see the track. Yeah, but the track is lit and everything around it is lit. And I think that's the difference between Starfall Racers is that it's going to be really dark so that you really just see the lights going across the sky. Yeah, Yeah, like you can't really tell that it's on a track. That's the impression I get from it, which I just think that's going to be so cool. Like Velocicoaster at night with the lights on it, like when that's... See, it's going to just be Velocicoaster without dinosaurs. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> so are the, the ride vehicles on this one are not going to spin, though? No. But this is going to be, I mean, a comet theme, literally like a vomit comet, you'd think. It says it's going to feel like a wooden roller coaster, but, you know, more smooth. That could be good or bad. I like wooden roller coasters, mm-hmm. but I'm getting older, so I could use them a little more, more smooth. <laughs> uh, they're going to have the Constellation Carousel. and. <sighs> It's supposed to be like a very innovative form of carousel, and there is an existing one called uh, Sea Glass Carousel in uh, Manhattan, somewhere like Battery Park City area, like down southern Manhattan, somewhere in New York. So if you're there and you've been on the Sea Glass uh, Carousel, apparently this will be similar. Same manufacturer, okay. same kind of thoughts. I like that. Very innovative carousel, which is, look, if you tell me like the, the signature element, this is going to be a carousel, I'm out. I'm out. But this sounds like a slightly elevated version. Probably still out. Like, I'm just not a, like, as far as I could tell, you are on something that's spinning yeah. that is mounted to something else that's spinning. Yeah. And, like, spinning plus spinning equals no. Well, that's the question is, is it going to feel like you're spinning or is it going to feel like very just kind of, yeah, I don't you know. know, smooth and nice? Which mm-hmm. I don't I don't know. It sounds like it could be uh, intense, but I really like the fact. Or blue fire. Yeah, could be. Um, I don't know. Jake was talking, and I heard him. Are we still live? I hope. Oh, we're back. What's that, Jake? We're back. Do we have a blip? Might have had a blip. That's fine. Anyway, so we got this new roller coaster. It looks really cool. They've yeah. been testing a lot. I like these elements that you see, these rockets and yeah, I, all the embellishments that they have. I love that style. Next up, we have Super Nintendo World. It's going to be themed to various N- Nintendo franchises uh, where they focus on Mario, of course. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that when I saw a video of the first Super Nintendo World in Japan before it opened, I thought it was something from a dream. It looked amazing. Coins are spinning around. It looks like the video games. Stuff is moving kinetic energy everywhere. Uh, and then you go in and you get a power-up band and you can hit the blocks and you can live your life like Mario. <laughs> Not a care in the world, just eat a mushroom every now and then and everything <laughs> will be fine. Um, I think that's great. By the way, on the news this week, uh, on, on Sunday, I saw they showed a clip, a saw blade somewhere. A four-foot saw blade came flying off of like a saw and spun and like went tearing like down a street and into a building that a lady had been just, just been standing right there. Oh, no. And all I thought of is, like, it looked like something out of, like, a oh. video game. Oh, you yeah. Know, Mario speaks out against, like, <laughs> spinning blades for the safety of video game characters, you know, is all I could think about. Oh. But, Little chainsaws going around. Yeah. So you're going to get to go inside your old... I mean, this looks to me like not... It actually looks like classic NES world more than Super Nintendo world. The gra- It seems more like... Low res uh, to me, which I love, which I'm I'm down with. Um, so of course, then I would want to meet characters like Mario and Luigi and Yoshi and all these. Uh, and then Metroid, I want a Metroid meet and greet. They could just do it <laughs> seasonally, right? Just have an area inside that they can flip it to like Metroid, Zelda, um, Excite Bike. What else can we do for a Duck Hunt? I want to meet Glass Joe for Mike Tyson's punch out. Just do rotating character meet and greets inside somewhere where you meet classic Nintendo characters. (laughs) I want my picture, like, 
running next to the guy riding the bike dun, 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 and punch out, you know, when you're training? <laughs> no. Do you run? no, you're not old enough. Uh, maybe I'm too old school. Uh, that's what I want. Uh, but the, f- the first primary attraction here is going to be uh, Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge. And Mario Kart, as far as I'm aware, was not available on the NES, so can't have the, the <laughs> t- can't have it be too classic. The only version of Mario Kart that's valid is Mario 64. All the other ones are just inferior <laughs> versions. That's the way that I like to say it. That was the official game of Company L uh, in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. That was our oh. official game was Mario Kart. Mario 64. None of the other ones. <laughs> only that one. That was the only one that counts. So um, we've seen this ride, basically. Mm-hmm. You've, you have experienced this ride. Yeah. Tell me about the experience. Um, so it's uses AR, so augmented reality. So it's the first uh, attraction, I think, uh, to use that, at least for Universal. So you wear a visor headset, and then when you get on the vehicle, there's um, a piece that attaches on, and that you know, allows you to see the characters as you go around. So there are set pieces and things like that. There's actual, you know, moving pieces on the ride, but you also see characters that you shoot at and blast at. So, like, without the visor on, you'll see a giant ship, but when you put the visor piece on, you'll see the character standing on the ship, and then you can blast at them. So it's like a video game. But the vehicle you're in is not moving fast. No, it's very slow moving. Um, I trying to even think of what to compare it to, but it's very slow moving. So this to me is a huge failure, right? From the drawing board up. Because much like fat, what do you think of when I say there's a ride for Fast and Furious? Exactly. I'm going to get in like a GTO. I'm going to go like rob a bank and I'm going to tow a vault through the streets of Rio or something like that, right? I'm going to like be, be in a fast car. And then what they do, they put you in a bus <laughs> And they just project stuff next to you on this bus. I know. And what's worse? It's the dumbest thing ever. So (laughs) now, what do I want to do? I want to ride a super fast cart, Mario Kart. It's a racing game. I want to ride in like a super fast vehicle (laughs) and go do stuff. I want to do that. So what I think they should do, instead of this augmented reality, you can mix augmented reality with a fast ride, right? Instead of this. I don't know. So. I want you to imagine a ride system similar to Radiator Springs Racers or Test Track, same ride yeah. system. Um, you can put people side by side, though, and have them race. And then through your augmented reality, maybe you have a couple buttons. So maybe maybe like I'm racing against you. You and Jake and Tom are in some mm-hmm. car up there, and I'm back here. Maybe I have, like, the blue shell. <laughs> maybe I can fire a shell at you guys and, like, knock you off track so I pass and, I, and my car wins the race. And then maybe you guys throw a banana peel in front of me and my car does like a, maybe it lifts off the track. Maybe it's like not actually on the ground like test track. Maybe it just feels like it's a slot car type of thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe my car spins around in place <laughs> or I go, you know what I mean? Like, let me do something like that. Let me do something fast where I'm actually getting the exhilarating feeling of speed and I'm not just sitting inside like going like this <laughs> with like stuff projected onto my visor. I mean, actually moving along it's not like do you remember back at epcot um when they had the cars that were all next to each other like um it's like uh interventions but the parking lot oh yeah there are lots of cars next to (laughs) each other no there was um there was a thing where they had the cars there were all different cars and they had a screen in front of them and you were racing other people see that's the thing is like i feel like if we tried to do something like that that that's just like so old. So I feel like to pick something with AR. I think the AR does, still feels old, th- even though like this is technology a lot of people haven't seen. Yeah. Once you see it, it's going to go like a little bit of it's going to go a long way. And you're going to be like, all right, like I get it. They're projecting a thing onto this visor I'm wearing. But they're not. I've do- seen a heads up display in a car. But I don't like, think they're going to do it for every attraction. So it's not like they're just going to repeat yeah. this and add this. It's like one thing that you can experience that. And. You know, it's like they tried, but yeah, I, I just like the idea of combining AR with a thrilling experience. Can it handle that? Because I don't know how this whole system works. I don't know. Projecting. This is the most epic theme park ever built. Of course, they'll be able to handle it. They have a bottomless budget. No, no. But the question is, can can it be done at all? Like, can you have AR work at a high speed? I mean, is it? I mean, I don't know how that works. Like, is there even going to be long enough time for characters Look, Annie, to appear I gave, if you're on I a high-speed game? <laughs> I, gave you the, I gave you guys the idea. 
I'm the creative one. It's your job to make it work. There's, I'm not in the ride like building part. I'm in the ride dreaming. See, department. we need we need dreamers, but we also need you know doers. I'm not a doer. I'm yeah, a dreamer. just so hire some doers. You got billions and billions of dollars, and Maybe you're building a park that you have dubbed as like the most epic park of all time. Maybe the expansion will be faster. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so also there we have Yoshi's Adventure. That is also. Uh, an attraction that I was really looking forward to, and then our video came out of it, and I was like, "Really? That's it? Like ten second? Like it's a ten second people mover?" Did we just take a ten second video, or is it actually ten seconds? No, I mean no, but it's very sh- it's very short. It's, I, it looks like something where you see it throughout the whole land, mm-hmm. but then when I actually watched the video out of it, I was like, "That's it." Yeah, like, that's really short. Their land is really small though, too, which is why mm-hmm. Hollywood didn't even get. The Yoshi. I mean, that thing would have been five seconds going around that land if there was Yoshi in there. So, yeah, Hollywood is is very small. I assume Epic Universe being a greenfield park where they had all this land and could just use it almost as much as they wanted, that their Super Nintendo world is going to be gigantic. Surely it will be the biggest one of theirs, at least, and probably, like, impressively huge. Yeah, I, I believe it's going to be much bigger. So hopefully... That would be cool. So hopefully the Yoshi's adventure there is, like, long and cool. Yeah. Because I like the idea, right? You ride on Yoshi. I think there's some egg buttons you hit to yeah. make things keep score or something. Yeah, yeah. Because it's all about But it's basically score. kind of a people mover type of experience. Yeah. And But that's a people mover where you get to see all of Super Nintendo World, which is really cool. Yeah. It looks really cool. I like it. Uh, last up, the Minecart Madness. Um, so that's going to be our roller coaster. Yeah. Take me through that one. That's going to be exciting. And we'll have video of that from Osaka pretty soon. So it's going to be pretty much the same thing. It opens in like a month or two. Yeah, right? it's pretty yeah. soon. Like real soon. So yeah. Tom yeah. is going to be covering that. Yeah, exactly. So we'll have video of that. But for now, um, it's it looks like you're on a coaster track, um, but the track, you jump tracks, if you're familiar right. with like so Donkey Kong. Right, so it's supported Kong. from beneath, but you can't see what's kind of like, yeah. in that sense, it's kind of like a Kuka arm attraction, mm. where you are kind of riding at the end on top of some kind of structure underneath mm. that you can't see. Yeah. And so it looks like you're on a track, but you're not really. Yeah. Well, you are, but the, you can't, the track that you look like you're on is not the track you're on. It's like E.T. And when so you're then flying. that track is gone, <laughs> and it feels like you jump. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. What a great idea. Yeah. It's like if if Expedition Everest, if you got to that end where the track is and then you kept going. And then, you yeah, know? you yeah. kept going. Yeah, that'd be and great. And then no one would throw their hair bands. Oh, my gosh. I know. And then you wouldn't see mess. the Yeti. And be... And is this one going to spin or do anything wild? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, no, I don't think no. so. Um <laughs> Also, I should backtrack a little bit because in um, it could though. You know, now in, I'm thinking about it. I'm kind of like I think it they're going to blast you out of the the barrel and things like that, right? Who so, knows? like, I mean, there's probably no spinning, but everything seems to be spinning here. So there is a third attraction. I got to go back to Celestial Park because I missed oh. it. Oh, Astronomica. There's Astronomica, which is a splash pad. Yeah, but that's that's cool. Uh, the one thing I, I it's like if your kid. If your kid's diaper is leaky, you send them over to the splash pad, right? And they just stand there, and then everybody gets sick. Without, I think that's how it works. Without Curious George, we need somewhere for them to right? go, you know? <laughs> I'm not a fan of splash pads. I like like misty areas, and I get it. But splash pads, to me, are always kind of – the idea is kind of gross because you don't know what – inevitably, some kid with a leaky diaper is getting his – whatever's coming out of him recycled through the system and splashed up on people again, Right. Isn't that how I it mean, works? you're touching these lap bars too, so yeah. I mean everything's gross there. I, yeah, I mean you got to be you got to be able, able to tolerate a little bit of germ Just risk. Take when some you go to vitamin C, you'll be fine. That's what I do. <laughs> so Super, Super Nintendo World sounds amazing. Yeah, and I think that's maybe a bigger draw for this park than the Harry Potter stuff because it's the one thing that's unique in town. Right. There's no other Super Nintendo world in Orlando. And people have been waiting for it. I mean, that's the thing is, like, we've gotten that taste from Japan and Hollywood. And if you haven't been to those parks, you're dying for that. You, you've you seen it. You've been teased enough with it being in other places. So I feel like that's going to be a huge pull for people. Do you think um, Do you think Poseidon's Fury at Islands of Adventure is going to be themed to Legend of Zelda like people talk about? I didn't, but I'm starting to. <laughs> I I really feel You don't like have to tell us your sources, but I only 
only feel like they're going to try to put Nintendo in each park. Yeah. It's going to be like the Harry Potter thing. We got those Nintendo fans coming. We want them to go to all three parks. We're going to make them go to all three parks. They aren't just going to Epic Universe. They're going to end up having to go to the other parks. I mean, they might just go to Epic Universe. Like it's, there's a lot. It's a big park, and there's all these new hotels that are going to be right there, and they don't True. have to go anywhere. Um, but how do you get them to go to the other parks? <laughs> you like know? some you kind of deal, right? you got to give them some kind of deal. Or add maybe, your things. Maybe passes that they sell, like a park hopper type of pass, will actually say, like, you're you're entitled to one day at Epic Universe and then another day at the other two parks. I'm like afraid. where the where the pass will be like stratified, so the Epic Universe ticket is kind of viewed separately from the other two. So the other two are like, yeah, hop back and forth. But yeah. Epic Universe, like once you're there, you. Well, I don't know. I mean, I wonder. You know, with Fantasy Springs opening in Tokyo, that. You know, you get a vacation package that guarantees you a day in, whereas everyone else has got to fight for it. You're not even guaranteed to get into Fantasy Springs, the whole area. Yeah. You know, so like, that, and that's part of the you part, stay there. Yeah. You know, yeah. And so it's like you, you know, I wonder how much of Epic Universe is going to be if you're staying at the Helios, you get in no problem. But yeah. everybody else, you might have a reservation. Is or Helios the, the biggest, the, 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 the highest tier hotel that they're going to have? I'm pretty sure because it's in park, it's going to be like Miracosta. Yeah. So it's it's like in the park. Yeah. So I and you can't tell people, oh no, you can't come to the park. It's full today. Like I assume that. that Sir, you those cannot people, step off of your balcony <laughs> into the theme park. Don't today. look out the window. You're not welcome there. You know. So I assume that that's going to be something similar. I don't think they'll do like vacation packages, but you bringing up that point of having like you buy a ticket that includes one day at Epic Universe and two days at the other park. And that's the way they pull people away from Epic Universe, but also convince them. Well, they're going to have to manage their workforce, right? Because we're talking about a lot of new jobs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're talking about a lot of new jobs to this area being brought here. So that's really great. You know, I think. No, I think it's a great. It's awesome. Like I worry about. The team members because, you know, shorter hours, you know, horror nights, they're getting tons of long hours. And then you've got these shorter periods where, you know, things are opening later. They cut th- uh, 3D out of something. So there's a few team members. I mean, why have a nighttime hours, like, spectacular when you're not open when it's dark? <laughs> well, that's the thing is why be open when you don't have a nighttime spectacular? I get it. But I'm yeah. worried about those team members that, you know, I'm like, let's make sure they survive till we got this epic universe with tons of hours. It's been lean times. I mean, they've been, like we said. Chopping entertainment, chopping hours, chopping experiences. Yeah. Like the makeup show just closed early with no, the makeup uh, experience oh, yeah. closed early with no notice. They're just like, eh, not enough people are paying 130 bucks for us to paint like Bride of Frankenstein in your face. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, they're cutting where yeah. they can. I know, but yeah. And then overcutting. probably taking all that money they save and pushing it to construction at Epic Universe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So we go to the next area. It's called Dark Universe. Dark Universe is based on uh, classic monsters, essentially. Enough. So what? I think enough. enough. I don't know if it's so. The problem is that I really am concerned about it being Doctor Victoria Frankenstein because I think they're really going with that like more modern, new, dark universe and not classic monsters. But all the stuff seems to be classic monster related. So help me dissect the story because every. Every group of people that talks about classic monsters has one person that corrects everyone. Like, oh. the monster's not Frankenstein. It's Frankenstein. Frankenstein is the doctor, yeah. and this guy is his monster. And you're yeah. like, I get it. But, like, colloquially, as a society, we all just decided you can look at that guy and go, that's Frankenstein, right? Or that's Frank. You can even shorten it. It's like a, to more familiar. And oh. Bride of Frankenstein, is that Dr. Frankenstein's wife, or is it Frankenstein monster, Frankenstein's monster's wife? That's a great question. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know because I'm not deep into the, like, canon of classic monsters. I I figure these are, like, probably public domain things that you can write your own adventures about these guys, right? Ooh. I'm going to write one and retcon it so that, his, so that when Dr. Frankenstein creates him, that he names him Frankenstein so you can fire it right back at the, like, people who, like, professionally correct other people. that Like, there's always someone that knows, like, one fact. And, like, everybody knows that fact. People just colloquial – Colloquially call him Frankenstein anyway. But everybody knows that fact, but there's got to be the one person in every group that like has something that they love to correct people on. Oh, I know. <laughs> Mine always used to – I have it. Mine used to be when people say something is very unique. And you say, no, it's not. 
It's either unique or it's not. It's not very. There are no degrees of unique. All you're right. either the only one or you're not the only one. You can't be very the only one, right? That, But it's annoying. Nobody yeah. wants to hear some smart ass like me say that. I know. I, I said, I want that so bad. And someone goes, no, you want it so badly. I'm like, okay. I got it. It's fine. I just, I just was excited. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Um, I, Frankenstein's monster, though. I just use it because... Everyone will attack me if not. I'll be chased out of the village with pitchforks if I call him Frankenstein. It's going to happen. Watch. So I think there should be a nighttime experience where you can, for the right amount of money, walk out of a castle, and then there's a bunch of people standing there with torches and pitchforks, and they chase you. Well, I believe the restaurant is supposed to be on fire. Like, it's the Burning Blade Tavern. Yeah. I I hope it's still going to be on fire because I heard— something but i believe it's still supposed to light on fire like um you know originally islands of adventure the lighthouse was supposed to have a a flame at the top yeah and then they switched it Hmm. um so i'm like please don't cut the flame (laughs) i would like that because then i'm gonna feel like i'm a monster running away from the flame (laughs) you know like friend (laughs) it's fun i hope the restaurants are good because i'll i'll be honest oh yeah while disney doesn't always have great restaurants and i ate at mama melrose's yesterday to remind me of that (laughs) Universal's food is pretty bad. It's been all throughout better. the park. It's pretty bad, getting better with it's some highlights. Better. Right yes. there's some highlights and there's yeah. some lowlights. But we've but, we've been seeing them really change over the last few years, and so I know food was a weakness for a long time. But I, and I'm, then they launched, then they closed Mel's for a period of time and launched a new menu at Mel's. And I mean, everybody says it's awful, right? Everybody, everybody that's tried Mel's says it's, it's awful now. Inedible. It's, awful. it's bad. Awful. It's, it's bad. Don't go there. Stay away. <laughs> Tom claims that the pizza at Louis is terrible. I've never actually, I've seen it a million times. I've never had it. I've had pizza fries. Oh, pizza I've never, fries. I've never actually eaten pizza from Louis. People say, Tom says it's bad. I was like, but is it bad or like, is it bad even for theme park pizza? No. Or is it bad because it's in a New York area claiming to be like uh, Italian? Italian, guy? yeah, no. It wasn't that bad. I, I ate a piece um, when I was waiting for the mummy to open. And I don't know if it was because I'd been on the bench for days without eating that the pizza was delicious, but I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> that is probably one of the worst things we've ever put you through. Oh, don't remind me. We had me. Annie just hang out there waiting for the mummy to reopen. By the way, this is not a story that breaks the internet and generates tons of revenue for the website either, right? It's like, but at some point it transitions from Annie being like, they've told me to be here when the mummy reopens to like you going, I will not miss this now. I am too committed to this to let somebody else be first. And Annie sat on a bench outside the mummy roller coaster for days and days. Months? I don't even know. It felt like a lifetime. Was rough. At any rate, <laughs> I dark... made some good friends though. Yeah, the mummy guys. <laughs> yeah, the mummy, the you mummy know? guys. That's what they got. Had a by. nice view the whole time. It was fine. Uh, Monsters Unchained: The Frankenstein Experiment is a yeah. dark ride. Um, I don't know if it is the experience of you being Frankenstein's monster, mm-hmm. if it's of you being Doctor Frankenstein himself, or if you are running from the monster. Um, I like to think this. I like to think that. It's a story told in like three acts, right? So it starts with you are brought up from an operating table and you are the you are Frankenstein's monster. But you're on a roller coaster. Who knows why? Just go with me. Then the second part of the story is like all the villagers get scared and upset. And then by the end of that second act, you're going through a scene where they've got their torches and pitchforks coming after you. And then at the end... Bride of Frankenstein shows up. They're united. They ha- they share a loving embrace, and the whole town applauds and like they draw a heart out of all their torches, oh. and then everybody's happy. And then the drones go up and form things in the sky yeah. outside, and yeah. So no, tell me about no. this ride. What do you know about the ride? <laughs> um, it's a Kuka arm, so it's like Forbidden. Oh boy, jo- yes. So oh Harry boy. Potter and the Forbidden Journey. If you've never suffered through that. It's time you I'll, try. I'll tell the story. I've told it before. I'll tell it again. I went on that ride one time, single rider. Um, the people I was with were like, nope. So I go on it. I went on it. I came off. They said, what do you think? I said, number one, it's one of the best rides I've ever been on. Number two, I'm never going in this ride again. <laughs> uh, it combined disorienting movement and projections in a way that I never want to experience again. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> I think I think at one point I was rolled onto my back and looked at like something projected on the ceiling. I don't even remember. <laughs> it's, it's pretty intense. But Kuka arm attractions are intense because yeah. they can make you do pretty much any type of maneuver in a Kuka arm. Yeah. And and then the f- motion that you're feeling is not the motion the vehicle is going. So I think that's really disorienting because there are like these dome screens and they look like half circles and your vehicle will come and connect to that. And the s- dome circle is spinning in a circle. So you spin in a circle, but you are feeling like you're moving forward, flying on a broomstick. So while your body is being spun one direction, your mind is telling you you're going forward. So it's similar to like, uh, not obviously as intense as Mission Space, but Mission Space, you are spinning that vehicle. That Yeah, you're in you a think, centrifuge. Yeah, but it, your mind thinks you're moving forward and, and around. Yeah. So I think that's that that is what is unsettling. Yeah. And in those domes, because I rode with the lights on, and, I mean, just every color of vomit splattered in those domes. I mean, it's you don't want to look at it with the lights on. Why is on. there so many color? I guess I it mean, depends on which, which, butter beer, which birdie bot bean ale. they were yeah. eating before yeah. they went on. Fishy green ale spills. I mean, you know. Frozen uh, butter beer. Yeah. Butter beer ice cream. <laughs> Try to identify. Hot butter beer. <laughs> You're trying to pick them all yeah. out. What's what? Yeah, right? Like, ooh, gosh. Yikes. <laughs> so didn't you say didn't you claim that you saw oh, a guy's prosthetic s- leg? Yes, yes. At the very end, I swear I saw a prosthetic leg. <laughs> I Laying swear. down on the floor. Yeah, like out of reach where like I don't think they could go and retrieve it. I, I don't know for a fact, but like the lights were on. So I'm seeing <laughs> things that are like a flip flop and things like that. And I'm, I swear, I saw a prosthetic leg down there. I Call swear. me old fashioned, but if someone's leg falls off, you stop the ride and go get it for them. <laughs> but if you can't get in there, there like there's certain spots you can't access. That's what I'm concerned. I mean, it's we know that there. at least a leg will fit in there. <laughs> Maybe like I don't, I don't know. I, I swear, I saw it. I, that's burned into my memory. The puke and the leg are burned into my memory. So. <laughs> Yeah. I don't ride that either anymore. <laughs> um, so, yeah, someone says that it's going to have set pieces according to rumors. I hope it exclusively has set, has set pieces and does not involve projections combined with kook arm in any way. Well, because— But it's universal, so it's probably going to have projections. But even without the projections, I think that's pretty intense, like the movement, because, like, when you go at the Dementors, like, you're swinging a lot— you're moving around um, the, the spider, because there are yeah. a lot of, like, props in there, yeah. but— uh, the screens are really what do you in, I think, that that motion. Yeah, those – it's not good. I don't like <laughs> that. I don't enjoy that sensation. For me, that means that Harry Potter and Forbidden Journey is a fantastic ride, but it, I'm probably not the only one that won't go on repeat vision, versions of it. So yeah. maybe a lot of – maybe it doesn't get a lot of rides these days because it's older now and as cool as it is, it has a reputation for being kind of intense. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then the other extreme, you go to Gringotts, which has great theming in a queue and a ride that's okay, but kind of relies on projections too. I love the depth of immersion and theming on that attraction down to the ride vehicle. The actual ride itself is kind of like, <laughs> we, all right, kind of feels like King Kong, you, right? Yeah, Universal does a great job at queues, and then sometimes the rides are just... Sometimes they do a great job at queues. Mm, I think a lot of the queues are really good. Yeah, well, Dueling Dragons was amazing. Back in the day. Oh, I I only did that. And they built a once. haunted. People loved it so much. They built a haunted house that was oh, the best yeah. house this year, probably, or one of the favorite houses this year. Dueling Dragons. Not mine, but but it's one of the. I mean, yeah. Well, it's the fans. It's you worth know? pointing out yeah. the wor- the worst haunted house was The Last of Us. <laughs> Maybe the only house they've ever done worse than that was that Fear Factor one that I went on in two thousand and two. <laughs> I think it was. I think Spirits of the Coven was pretty bad. They had good sets, though. Yeah. yeah good. The good sets can save yeah. it. Uh, Last of Us didn't have a whole lot to look at. We need more um, puppets and animatronics in our Horror Nights houses because I think that was one of my – my first Horror Nights house was – I know we're going off topic here. But my first Horror Nights house was Alien vs. Predator in 2014, and I worked in it. And, like, the puppets and things like that, the alien puppets, like the mouth coming out and Mm -hmm. stuff like that, I mean, there's that was just over the top. Like, amazing. So amazing. And that's not what you get from a cauliflower brains, you know. So they've come a long way. Yeah, the fear factor is. (laughs) this cauliflower or is it brains? I think I had to crawl through a tunnel. It was like I was in someone's garage. What a joke. I love that. I'm still mad. I still want my money back from 2002 (laughs) Halloween Horror Nights for like a number of reasons, (laughs) but one of them is the quality of that Fear Factor house. 
The other one that someone broke my nose on accident. Oh, yeah. Oh. I was riding with someone, and she was looking over the front of the log when we came to the drop on Dudley do I don't know why I went to Halloween Horror Nights and rode <laughs> Rips Hall Falls. Um, but we hit the bottom. Her head snaps back, hits me right in the nose, explodes. Oh, God. I'm wearing, like, a brand-new white polo that ended up in the garbage, and I bought some cheap Jurassic Park T-shirt or something. Uh, yeah, those were the days. But that Halloween Horror Nights, oh, sounds uh, like, not one of my favorite memories. Sounds like what happened to Fabio. Do you remember when he got hit yeah, with a pigeon? Yeah, a bird. Yeah, whatever. He got broke his nose. That's what I'm picturing when you talk about where, it. Was that at a Disney park? No, I don't know where that was. It's probably know. somewhere in Europe or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where Fabio's from. Uh, um <laughs> So we have, where were we? We were talking about, okay, um, the monster's unchained. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I skipped ahead to Harry Potter because that's just how this podcast goes. <laughs> we don't have a structure. We've tried to record this several times. Um, so that we think, we don't know what's happening except it's a Kuka Arm attraction with um, Frankenstein involved. Yeah. Someone named Frankenstein Monster. involved. We didn't Frankenstein. Even, if it's Dr. Stuff. Frankenstein, we didn't even give him a proper title, so... You know, well, yeah. uh, maybe it's Victoria Frankenstein. It could be, well, it, it is Victoria yeah. Frankenstein. She's involved. We don't know <laughs> if it's from her point of view. We don't even know. Is she like the great grandniece of the original doctor? We don't even know. We just yeah. know that like they're like, uh, you know, someone's named Victoria. And it oh. involves Frankenstein. All right. Curse of the Werewolf, a, sp- a Mac spinning roller. Oh, God. Yeah. Wait, do we really need more spinning things? Apparently. Okay. We, you complained coaster. about projections. Now everything's going to spin, okay? No more projections. Everything's spinning now, Do what you're Eric. good at. Projections <laughs> and spinning. <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw the ride testing for this, and I don't know. So there are coasters that spin, and they are programmed to rotate at certain times. Right. This one, I don't know if it's just because it was testing, but like with the dummies on it, one was just going a lot and the others weren't. So I don't know. It's just spinning around. And yeah. Spinning around. So I don't know if it's something that like you might get a super spinny version just based on the weight in your vehicle yeah. versus, or if it was just because it's it's testing that they were doing rollbacks and things like that to see how. So it you can say at Epcot they have Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Yeah, it won a Theo award. People call it. Yeah, it's a great ride. It's very fun. People call it a spinning coaster. It's not, right? It rotates in pre-programmed ways in a controlled mm-hmm. way. And no, at no time, as far as I can tell on that ride, gonna... are you just freely spinning, mm-hmm. like just the, let her go, let her rip. It's It rotates to different areas, to, you know, so you're looking at the right stuff. But it's not, I wouldn't classify it as spinning. It's still intense for some people, like Jason Diffendahl. Cannot write it. Yeah. He threw up in his hat on that, literally in his hat. Since we're talking about Forbidden Journey, <laughs> yes, Cosmic Rewind also has some. And then what do they do? It make you walk up a set of stairs and then right back down a set of stairs right after you've done this. Oh, gross. So, um, but it's not like a spin. So, yeah. what I'm concerned about is could I get on a ride vehicle where you, the people in the ride somehow control the spin, which is usually like a county fair type of spinning ride? Mm-hmm. And I can get on with some kid who wants to wants to make it spin yeah, like some like a teacup. Seventeen year old person laughing and wanting to impress their girlfriend at how fast they can make it spin. And I'm stuck on there. Uh, is, is it go by weight? So if I'm riding and you're riding, it's going to spin like in my direction a lot. I I um, think it would be weight. Yeah. If anything, or is it controlled in some manner? Because um, we talked about. Uh, Militaries. When I was in the Marine Corps, they had something called spy rigging. Spy oh. rig, S P I E. Uh, basically, what happens is, let's. I think it's, the application is like you're in a jungle, you need to be rescued. So a helicopter can't land, but they can hover over the treetops and drop a rope down to you, and then you take that rope and clip it on a harness, and then they can extract like four, five, six guys, right, or people. Um, so when you do that, we would we would do it just for training or for fun. And we're flying around, and basically, if you do this, you go straight. If you do this, you spin that way. If you do that, you spin this way, right? So you most people are flying, maybe taking a picture here and there if you if you're going Hollywood <laughs> style, you know, like we take disposable cameras when I was in because that was a thing, and we didn't have iPhones. Um, but inevitably, there'd be one person that was either on the, that was usually on the bottom. <laughs> And they would hold one arm out and make everybody spin. And everybody above them is like eventually kind of whipping around and shouting. And I'm like, stop it. You know, like, 
I feel like there's always one of those people in a theme park, too. So if someone else can make me spend more than I want to spend, I'm not going to like it. The exception would be Men in Black, where I have a fair chance to shoot their vehicle and make them spin. You got to do that to protect my people who don't want to spin. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Defense. So um, anyway, a spinning. we get a spinning coaster. And you've seen some glimpses of this. Yeah. So we'll see. Dark universe. All right. Our next portal we come to is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Ministry of Magic. Mm-hmm. Um, and the attraction so far that we believe is going to be Harry Potter and the Battle at the Ministry. It's yes. a dark ride. Yeah. What do we know about it? That's... Nothing. It's just a dark ride. I mean, I, I've i seen us post things way back about different ride systems. I'm not, I'm not positive on that one. Honestly, I'm not into the wizarding world like that's just doesn't connect with me at all so i think that's the area that i'm like least interested in i know people are going to come for me but i just we have enough wizarding worlds like i don't am i am i wrong yeah is is the product being diluted is this going to be diluting the product could have done another land something or did they have some contract that said you need to put it in all your parks here or what? Is the attraction just like you look over and J.K. Rowling is riding a giant pile of <laughs> cash and laughing and throwing money in the air? Into the flames? I Into don't know. Into the flames? Why? We don't you know. know. I don't right? know. <laughs> so um, we don't know what that's going to be. I think in general, though, like, I know you're not a Harry Potter person. Like, yeah. Do you have... You're not a person that bought a robe. No. You don't know what house you belong to. You don't take the quizzes. No. I don't know. Like, I like... I like the setting and aesthetic of Harry Potter and the films. Um, I have not, I admit, I've not seen every Harry Potter film, but I've seen most of them, and I'm basically aware of the general major moments in the Harry Potter timeline, right? And I really appreciate the deep theming that they've gone into with creating yeah. this. So um, I think that's going to be really cool. Um, it does look like it's going to be really cool. Like I think I heard something about, like, a dragon breathing in the walls or something. I've, I've, I've only, like, again, this is not the land that interests me. So I don't, I know it sounds terrible to be like, I just have not invested much time into looking at it, but I know that it's going to like, the streets are going to kind of like be crooked and angled. So like, you don't, you don't see the end of the section. Um, it looks really cool. And like I was looking at like some of the, the model photos they showed and things. And it it looks like it's going to be really cool like street vibes. But I just I don't I know. love that. Like it's the Diagon Alley. Type yeah, of thing that's. Where roofs are sagging. Streets are uneven. It looks like it was built piecemeal by drunk elves. <laughs> like, I really like that kind of look. It's kind of like the closest you get it maybe at Disney is if you go to Gideon's to buy cookies. Mm. Like, they they have this kind of weird bookshop with uneven shelves and drooping things. And it's really cool if you go inside Gideon's. And that reminds me of, like, the Harry Potter look. So there are people locally that are really good at building to that aesthetic, I think. Yeah. And it looks great. That's the thing is, like, I know it's going to look great. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. I, I wonder how much of it is is focused on making those experiences with the new wands because yeah. we're supposed to be getting new wands. And then there were a lot of um, the creatures in – Osaka that we've seen um, a hippogriff. They had a hippogriff show. Yep. They have the pygmy puffs. They have the nifflers. They uh, have the, the baby nifflers. dragons. You're just making stuff up now. Yes, exactly. I was like, oh, I hope I said that right. <laughs> no, but wow. I, I wonder if they're going to have some of those meet and greets and experiences in the Wizarding pygmy World. Pygmy puffs, so. nifflers, hi- hippogriffs, Hufflepuffs. <laughs> Harry Potter, she just just throws out. Making stuff I think she up. get these are all guesses she had in Wordle that they're like these aren't words. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So there also they were, there's been a trademark filed for Le Cirque Arcanus, a yeah. stage show of some kind. We think. Yeah. Why don't they ever have like a Quidditch game? Why can't I sit and watch in a little Quidditch stadium, some kind of show, where people fly by playing Quidditch? That's a great idea. I like that I mean, one. Why not? Right? <laughs> no, I think that'd be cool. I would totally watch that. I mean, we have clearly we, we've got dragons that can fly over the theater of for untrainable. So could we have some people on the broomsticks flying around? I and think we you could do that? it similar to how they do the Born Stuntacular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where 
at times it's actually hard to distinguish what's a real set piece and what is a screen mm-hmm. and what are people and what are not. And I think you could do a similar type of Quidditch show with that technology. That would yeah. be really cool. Yeah. I Hopefully, agree. knock on wood. Maybe that's the expansion because each land has an expansion. We'll get to that. We'll talk about expansion. Okay. <laughs> um, so we got to go because we got to keep moving on because there's just a ton of attractions. It's the biggest theme park ever. Uh, Hiccups Wing Gliders. We're going to How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it, I think it's a pretty big film franchise, not as big as some of them. They took care, though, to explain to us that this takes place between the second film and the third film. So they're calling it like the 2.5 on a timeline. Yeah. And I don't know that there are people that strictly enforce the canon of How to Train Your Dragon like they do with Star Wars and Harry Potter and some of these other like mega franchises. Like I'm sure there are people who are like you could probably get a doctorate degree trying to track the Marvel timeline and where every Infinity Stone is at each moment and all that (laughs) kind of stuff and where it goes. I don't know that the intent is to have how to train your dragon be that big. I think it's like show some weird jolly Vikings no. and like everyone's happy. I don't need to be transported in timeline. Just give me the kind of thing I saw in the film okay. and everyone's going to be happy, right? Do you fair, think fair. That, do you think that there are people that follow this timeline so closely that they're going to be like this is impossible. This didn't happen until the third movie. I don't I don't think so. I think people are just going to like fully immerse themselves into it and and I know that when they announced Dreamworks Land at Universal Studios Florida, the most comments were why is there no how to train your dragon? Which obviously it's cuz it's getting its own entire land. So there's clearly a demand for how to train your dragon out there. Um we even saw when we had the toothless um popcorn bucket I think last year oh that thing was sick that thing sold out so fast so fast so obviously there are people that you know can relate to this cute adorable character whether you're a huge fan of the movies or whether you've just seen them casually but I just think the colors and all the immersiveness of this land and how you know dragons I mean who doesn't love dragons and they're you're gonna be able to meet dragons here and I think maybe even see them fly. I want to meet Toothless. I will freak out when I meet Toothless. What's the kid's name? Hiccup. Hiccup. Are you going to meet Hiccup? Yes, but can we talk about that concept art for the meet and greet? I know it's an awkward conversation, but I really want to know. I I am all about awkward conversation. Okay, so the concept art shows the Hiccup and Toothless meet and greet. And if... Spoiler alert! Hiccup loses his leg in well what? part of his part of his leg in the first movie. So if we're I think in, I think I need to rewatch that one. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember the Luke Skywalker like. Yeah, does his dad chop it off? No, I think a dragon got it, but his dad saved him, so it was nice. It was like, oh, that was polite. Of yeah, him. and then you know uh, he, and then he up went. And he, he went over to Islands of Adventure and picked a fake leg up off of the oh. ground at Harry Potter Forbidden Journey and slapped it on him. <laughs> We came all the way back to that. Yes, yes. See, that's where it came from. I like these, <laughs> like, deep storylines. <laughs> we connect everything. Well, that's what I want to know is that how are we going to to do that? Because I would love to see some representation. Um, I also am worried that they're just going to stick boots on them and say his prosthetic leg is under the boot. And or put him behind a, a that's true too. Like yeah. donkey. Yeah. Um, I mean, I imagine it's not easy to cast like, okay, I mean, the successful applicant will look exactly like Hiccup. You'd be, be surprised. a child with one leg, and it has to be the right leg, <laughs> and say missing, it was a child. amputated b- below the knee. And like, how old is See? Hiccup? He's like a kid. Well, yeah, but we, I mean, how many kids are there? Uh, oh, please don't tell me this is going to be like a mascot character. <laughs> oh, please don't tell me it's going to have a plastic head. Now I just sorry, sorry. I just, <laughs> just that would got be horrible. concerned. I just got concerned all that of a sudden. That would be thinking, horrible. You, you want because, Hiccup to be a face character, yeah. but you want Toothless to be like some kind of animatronic type of thing yeah. that can react to you and you can like, like nuzzle. Like up Blue. To and, yeah. But not vicious. Blue wants to rip your throat out. Like. Toothless. Blue's your favorite character, isn't she? I think so. 
I think so, yeah. You're you're a Jurassic Park I person, am. though. That's your Yeah. Thing. I actually thought you've commented about how many Jurassic shirts I have. I've thought about like putting every single one of them on and just I'm wearing the like... Jurassic Tiki shirt today just for you. See, I need that one. I need right. that one. <laughs> no, that's great. Um Yeah, before we even get to the attractions. The toothless meet and greet is going to break the internet. I know. It's gonna be ador- I know it'll be adorable. I can't wait. I can't wait. I just, again, I know that it's just me with little details, like like when you said, are people going to really be that concerned? It's 2.5 or like the storyline of yeah. dragons. Well, I'm going to be concerned if Hiccup has two legs. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I'm concerned that the same company that's very concerned with this timeline doesn't care a bit about sight lines in Hogsmeade. So. <laughs> They didn't have money then. They were barely surviving. They're the cable company. Don't tell me they don't have money. Now, we're talking about when Hogsmeade was built. That place was, I mean, who even went to Universal? The Velocicoaster's new. Yeah. I mean, when it's working. It's working. (laughs) Is it up again? I know it was unexplained downtime for quite a long time this year. It happens once in a while. Yeah. Once in a while. Well, it happens to Hagrid's all the time. That's my biggest thing. I mean, here's the thing. Here's the biggest miss (laughs) is they didn't – I don't know how they didn't consider this. That within, like, days of the ride opening, kids are standing on a bridge throwing ice at people that are going by at 50 miles an hour on a roller coaster. How did they not know their own audience? Everybody that's been to Universal knew that someone's going to stand on that bridge and throw stuff at people. Maybe they were the people that designed – Japan, because in Japan, nobody would would do that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Which is another example of when in Osaka, they have the um, model, the Bowser model on display in the queue, and it's just there. Oh, it'd be covered in bubblegum and hairbands if it were here. Ours had to be put in a cage after like a couple days. Yeah. Because when I went for soft opening, it was out there. And then people just, they want to pull and break. and, and, And I. We are the worst. I mean, stop touching stuff, guys. Stop. <laughs> it drives me crazy. Like, I like, look with your eyes. That's me. I just, my eyes, my eyes. Look with your eyes, eyes. please. Scream. Look with your eyes and scream with your heart. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. I get very excited, but I keep my hands to myself. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's, it's, it's shameful that people come to the parks and, and try to do things like that. I, I don't understand that. Hiccup Swing Gliders is a multi-launch Intamin roller coaster. We've seen some concept art for this. They've taken us on, you know, past yeah. it. And I'm excited for this because this is my favorite type of roller coaster, which is uh, kind of similar to Hack. Are we back, Jake? Yes. We're back. I, apparently there was a there was a hiccup. Um, this hiccup. is my favorite. Yeah, not the kid from How to Train Your Dragon. Just a real like technical hiccup. Uh, folks, we're already doing this because we're having some technical issues with our systems. So uh, it's not a surprise that we're having a little trouble with the live stream. Um, this roller coaster is very close to the ground and the water, and that reminds me of the best parts of Velocicoaster. And most of Hagrid's, right? Where you're close to the ground, you can feel that sensation of speed. You're hurtling through the woods. You're going above water. I mean, this looks like it's going to be an amazing experience. There's mist yeah. you go through. You're very close to the water at one point. Yeah, and then there's, um, like, um, a hiccup uh, animatronic, I think, in the beginning of it, too. Yeah. So I'm like, it, uh, that's the thing is I want more show scenes for these coasters. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I— Here's, I, here's the thing, though. People will say, oh, you— know, I have friends that go, oh, I, we always go to Universal because they got kids that want throw words and stuff. They're not there because they care about the story. They're not they're there because they like being turned upside down and flung down the track of a roller coaster, which is a great thrill, and I used to love it a lot. I don't love it as much as I used to. But, like, those friends that I'm talking about, they don't care about the story. They probably haven't seen half these movies, right? They just want to have a good time and be, you know, on a thrilling coaster. And that is a thing that separates Disney from Universal because for all their faults, uh, especially recently, Disney still spends a lot of time on story, right, on these things. And a lot of these things are done with that at the forefront. Let's tell us. We're telling a story. Now how do we make the ride go through it? 
there have been some areas where they've fallen short recently with that. But in general, Disney is for being transported to a story thing. Universal mm-hmm. is to go scream your head off and have a good time. And there's a theme. There's a general theme in the area you're in and the rides. Especially the Harry Potter stuff has become so very well themed. Like that it's like a, you know, that next level of, I thought, I think the best theming I had seen at the time was um, Tower of Terror, the theming and the queue and everything else. And then really, I think the Harry Potter stuff at Universal took it to the next level, especially for me, Diagon Alley, Mm -hmm. took it to the next level Mm -hmm. where it is, um, I, I don't think that Disney even lived up to it with their Star Wars theming. I think Disney... Try. They took a, a risk because they thought they could get away with anything, and I think it backfired. I think most people tell you they love that Galaxy's Edge exists. It's great to have a place where you can go and exist in that universe and build a lightsaber, which is one of the coolest experiences that you could have. But in general, the theme is a little, like, it doesn't draw you in. It kind of just makes you, like, look at it. And I, I feel like in the Harry Potter stuff, they've they've nailed it more of sucking you in, and I hope that Universal has learned from that with Epic Universe that they're like, we got to be really immersive. Yeah. Right, everywhere. Well, and How to Train Your Dragon, why not? And that's, you know, How to Train Your Dragon. Obviously, there are people that like it and are going to go for it. But you also have to get the people that don't care about it to care about it. Yeah. And not because of the story. Because uh, here's an example. Pandora, beautiful at Animal Kingdom. Yeah. The, at night, the ride is amazing. Never have I felt the need to watch the movie. Nothing, no, right. but but I love the land. So you can make people fully immersed and care and and appreciate and love an attraction, and not even know what who are these Navi people. I don't care. I, I, I mean, could, but I loved it. So no, I mean, like you know, they could break up with James Cameron tomorrow and not have rights to quote Avatar, and that would still be a gorgeous land with yeah. amazing rides that they could just tweak a little bit. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not. The land doesn't really depend on it being Pandora. The land depends on how great the design of the land is. And it is taking inspiration from Pandora. Mm. But if you called it, if I, if you didn't tell me that it started as Pandora and you took me in there and said, this is themed after the Mist video game franchise or something, I'd be like, okay, cool. It's awesome. You know, it's so beautiful. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I think with this, it does matter. Like how to train your dragon. You want to be, you want to. You want to hang out in the Viking village, right? In yeah. the Mead Hall. No, but I Especially mean, if the Mead Hall actually has beer. This, yeah. And not like, <laughs> we don't have beer. We have the mead that my grandfather created in it. You know, it's the, t- try this grog. I would, I would like that. I'd be down for yeah. some grandfather's grog or whatever, you know. But, yeah. uh, but, but, I, but my, my point was that people will go in there and never have seen dragons and hopefully be immersed. And, and, yeah, yeah. and so the, and they don't, aren't going to run home and probably watch it, but they're going to enjoy it. They're going to watch that show and just be mind blown. And, and so, you know. I think it's a perfect, like, if we say it's secondary or even tertiary to everything else, because people are going to go for Super Nintendo World, people are going to go for Harry Potter, and oh, by the way, How to Train Your Dragon and Monsters are here, right? Oh, I that you're, know. it's going to be a nice surprise and delight where they're going to go in there and they're going to be like, man, I didn't really come wanting anything to do with this, but look how adorable this land is. And I could be with Viking. By the way, do not do not confuse the Vikings of this <laughs> franchise with like the TV show Vikings because they spend their time doing completely different things. These are. No, we're not. <clears throat> I don't think. I don't know. <clears throat> All right, I guess we're back. Sorry, some more technical glitches. So the How to Train Your Dragon, I think, is a perfect thing to fill that little gap. Like, give me some surprise and delight of something I wasn't thinking about. This isn't why I came here. Right? I came here for Super Nintendo yeah. World. I came here for Harry Potter, but I found this amazing thing. And, yeah, these Vikings are not raiding and murdering like real Vikings, which is fine because Disney's pirates do not do that either. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> um, I don't think a, a popular refrain, though, uh, is when you talk about Epic Universe, like this is 
Universal's lapping Disney. They're they're winning. And you look at it, and you're like, well, Universal is still. Uh, Tom will Tom will say inferior product. I won't say that. I'll say it's different. Um, they are still chopping hours, chopping entertainment, diluting their experience of what it, a lot of people do believe is kind of an inferior experience. But they're going all in on this, mm-hmm. and I. I I love this, and I think it's a great little idea for this Isle of Burke, which is the, the unexpected thing that people, I think, might latch on to. I do, too. I think the rides there are going to be uh, – those are some of the most interesting rides, if you ask me. Right. The hiccup wind gliders, like the coaster, like you said, the low to the ground with, near the water. Yeah. There's the fire drill. Well, let's I go. Mean, Dragon Racers Rally is a dual Gerstlauer Skyfly. Yeah. This sounds like spinning. This, this looks like spinning in the concept art. Yes, but More I, spinning. But I don't think other people's spinning is going to affect you. So I think because it looks like you can have your own mild or wild experience, like either you just chill on the wing glider or you figure out how to make it spin. Um, I think there's that video of that lady spinning in one and her yeah. pants fall down or yeah. something. like. So I mean, that does not need to be me on opening day because people will be filming. You so. probably just see people wandering around without pants on in a neighborhood you have to go through to get between oh, the parks. Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, no, I'm I'm okay with it. I don't like to spin as much as I used to. So there's see, Universal has determined through their research. They're like people like projections, people like spinning, people like intensity, and so that's what they're going with. They in this way they are. There's a bifurcation of style from Disney, and maybe like I said, maybe this doesn't hurt Disney so bad because they're both going for different people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Disney doesn't have a come twirl and hurl type of attraction. <laughs> They have some intense attraction, but they don't have anything like that that's, like, inspired by your carnival. I mean, they had some rides that were carnival quality. But, you know, I don't I don't know. Disney, they're not often going, we're just going to spin, spin, spin until you puke. Yeah. Well, there are a couple I mean, things that are old. But. A lot of Disney rides you can take babies on, and you can't take babies on rides at Universal. No, so no. It's, Universal's it's, much more strict than Disney about everything. Yeah. Part of it is because they want you to rent a locker. Right. I think a lot of it's safety issues. Like somebody lost an eye on uh, Dueling Dragons. Someone lost a some leg. On Where they lost journey. their prosthetic leg yeah. from <laughs> Forbidden Journey. I just, I think like all theme park rides have those risks. And Disney has been willing to say, we don't care if you take your phone on our ride. You can take a full camera. <laughs> I can't think of a Disney ride domestically that you can't take a camera on, that we, you haven't seen footage of. Yeah. Right. I mean, Tron Light Cycle Run, the first time I went on it, I wore a GoPro on my wrist, and they told me to take it off. Uh-huh. Uh, that was a cast member preview or an AP preview or something. Uh, but other people just went straight on there and just held their camera. It was no problem. They, yeah. they, don't, they don't care. Disney, you want to take uh-huh. a backpack on the roller coaster? That's all right. You want to take your phone? Universal is like, is that a, I think there's a piece of paper in your pocket. You need to be go over here and put it in the locker. Yeah. You know, they're very concerned about that. Yeah. So now they they have more spinny rides, right? They have more they have more rides that people look at and go, no way. <laughs> Rip ride rocket being one of them. Where people look at the lift hill, they're like, I'm good. I don't need to do that. Yeah, that's my thoughts. <laughs> uh, so this is a skyfly thing that spins around. We don't know a whole lot about it. We've just seen kind of a little video of it. Yeah, we've seen some testing and stuff, but it looks like there's going to be like the bleachers or whatever you want to call them. Um so people can like stand up and watch the, you yeah. know, because that's the it's the race. What's the uh, racers rally? Racers rally. That's why it's like dragon what racers it? rally. Dragon racers rally. Okay, that's why it's like okay. So you're watching them race. So you, if you don't want to spin, you can hang out there and watch. So are you on a dragon? Is that kind of what you're? Yeah. yeah. Like it, you're sp- like each one has like wings. Like mm-hmm. and then there's the uh, dragons at each end, which are like the counterweights. And there's like a red one and a blue one, which are um, dragon challenge. Reference. Yeah. Um, or Dueling Dragon, sorry. There's so many to comment oh. that Disney, um, that Universal does value the kind of mid range, low to mid range hotels. Well, it's true. They have a lot of those uh, hotels that are more in the mid range. They're more, yeah. It's more affordable to stay. Yeah. Like very often you can find really good deals at Cabana Bay. Like very, yeah. very, very yeah. affordable compared yeah. to at times some of the Disney value resorts are still three, four, or $500 a yeah. night. Well, 
also with the the nicer hotels, the higher up ones at Universal, you get the express pass. You get express pass. Yeah. So yesterday I was sitting in Today Cafe, and this family, the husband, had gone out to like get express passes for everyone, and then he came in and he's like, "They're three hundred and fifty dollars each." Yeah. And there's like he's like, "We're gonna have to take out a mortgage," and I was just like. You could probably get a hotel room cheaper, you know? Like, Do you know that that is one thing, one area where I think Disney um, fails and Universal succeeds is with oh, Express Pass. Yeah. Because right now, here's what Disney does. Disney sells you a cheap-ish. It's not cheap, but it's not $350, yeah. like Universal Express Pass, right? Yeah. It's a 20 bucks or whatever for Genie Plus, mm-hmm. which over half of their guests buy. So now you're spending 20 or 30 bucks just to keep up with the – you don't get a premium experience. Universal, you spend a lot of money, but you are far above – like you are much higher priority than almost everyone in the park when you buy that. So in that respect, if you make it a premium product, they probably could make a similar amount of money. What Disney does is kind of – kind of just tricks you into thinking that you're buying something that really gives you this big advantage over everybody, and it doesn't. I know. It does not give you an advantage over everybody. No. It keeps you average. And then they have you blocked in with a certain amount of time, so all those people yeah. that bought those are showing up at that time. Yeah. And, you know, that's the nice thing about the Express Pass is that you just show up and get in line, and you're not going to show up and the 100 people that are planning to be there at 4 o'clock, you know, oh, all, our time is at 4, so 100 people at 4 just jumped in front of you. Yeah. You're just It's a little more free roaming. But I wouldn't be surprised if Universal starts doing something like individual Yeah, passes. I just think so. You, uh, Disney charges a pretty good premium, but not enough to like keep people from doing it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Not, not enough to keep people from doing it. Yeah. So they're kind of relying. They're kind of counting on you being an idiot, right? Or being not knowing how things work. They're mm-hmm. kind of counting on you thinking that you're buying something that's really great, and you're really buying something that's pretty poor to mediocre. And um, and in that sense, at least Universal's honest. They're so like, you're paying a lot of money, but you're getting. A, a really premium product for yeah. this. It's not a premium product if everyone has it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 they Kinda do like limit we say, it. Yeah, if everything's a priority, nothing's a priority, right? If if everybody has it, it's not a premium product. Yeah, right. You're just charging people an extra, you know, little chunk on top of their ticket. Bad, bad Disney. It's that Genie nickel Plus. and diming, though. That's the yeah. thing. Is like, just charge me two hundred bucks or three hundred bucks and call it a day. Like, well, I Universal hate the nickels 20, and dimes 20s. too. Well, Universal not for has the a Express. lot. Of, no, but not That's, for Express, but for yeah. a lot of other things, they do nickel and dime you at Universal. So, mm. you don't think so? I don't. I don't feel that. I don't really. I mean, there are some things where it's like, oh, now you got to buy a wand to do wand magic, and here's a power up band to hit. There's a lot of death cubes. by a thousand paper cuts. At but you any don't need park. any of that. Yeah. So it's not like you're, you know, I feel like you really, when you go to a Disney park and you look at these lines and you're like, I got to buy this stupid pass. Universal I, charges you know, for parking at their hotels. That's, yeah, but you can get your they, parking validated if you eat there. So yeah. that's, that's at least nice. Yeah, I don't know. We There's have some... valet parking for our parks. That. Uh, yeah, nice. <laughs> except when you show up in a rainstorm and they refuse to park your car and you're the angriest Jason Diffendahl oh, I've remember. ever seen. Oh, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to talk about that. That was a bad night. That was. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, last but certainly not least, we have Fire Drill. It's oh, F-Y-R-E, yes. like the great music festival that so many people remember. Um, <laughs> is a splash battle boat ride. Yes. So battle to me says me against you. Yeah. But I think it might be. You get to shoot water. Yeah. Maybe at people, maybe at fires that you're trying to put out. We don't really. Maybe at both. No. (laughs) Maybe at whatever you want to shoot at. (laughs) It looks like you're going to be shooting at the other boats. Like I was kind of looking at it and, but it. There's going to be targets all around to blast at as well. I love that it's a boat ride. I love that it's interactive. It's not a screen. Like, I, I want to blast things, and I don't need screens, so this is kind of cool. But there's no height requirement, which is another thing I know that I talked about earlier with VillainCon. It's like we need some of these rides that everybody can do because you want a family to be able to book a trip to Epic Universe and they don't want to say, well, the baby can't do anything, so we are going to Disney yeah. instead. There's got to be something. Baby likes projections and spinning. <laughs> Take the baby. Um, no, I think this is great, but there's potential for hurt feelings and like confrontation oh. because 
Like there are other attracts, there are other attractions where you can squirt water on people, but usually you as a bystander outside of the attraction, the bilge barges where you can pay money and shoot water, like control cannons that shoot water on the people that are going by in the boat. Uh, there was SeaWorld had that Atlantis thing where I think you could do the same thing. Yeah. This is going to be a, uh, apparently where I can shoot from my boat onto another boat and I can see someone getting upset that maybe you overdid it um, as maybe people are prone to do in central Florida and maybe you wait for them on the dock afterwards to have a word with them about getting you, getting you a little too wet. So I'll be, I'll be there with my camera waiting for the fights. You know, we don't have universal fights that often. I, I've never seen one. I've only seen the Disney ones. I'd love to see a universal one. No, I, won't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the Disney ones get more publicity. Um, there is certainly people that have an interest in creating a narrative that Disney's not a, good place to go and I, safe. And I would be stuff. no, I think I'm angrier when I'm at Disney. I Really? I am. I am not Is it happy. Probably because you bought Disney Plus or Genie Plus <laughs> and you thought you were getting a premium experience and they moved the shells on you. <laughs> and they, they they said, ha ha, another sucker. They won't be back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what do we care if they come back? Right. <laughs> you know, they got their money now. Um, but yeah, I feel angrier at, at Disney. So that's that's just my thought is that Disney is very high stress, and I don't feel that at Universal. I think Disney is pretty chill in certain places and other places it's high stress. I think right? it depends on what you're I going for. I think for whatever reason, people get stressed at Magic Kingdom because there are a lot of um, like parades and nighttime spectacular stuff and little stage shows where you're kind of like competing for space with yeah. people. And I think that's part of it, right? They're just mm -hmm. like Universal. They're like, ah, we, we, should, we close at five. Just go home. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> no, maybe that's why. Maybe. <laughs> no, I don't know. But I mean, I've been. At Animal Kingdom has a great little vibe. That's kind of a community vibe. I would say, like, like everybody's. You could tell people are all kind of feeling it. And uh, the nighttime vibe of Hollywood Studios. How can you get mad at someone? I, I think it's just Magic Kingdom. I think. I, I think spent, it's Magic Kingdom. I used to get sent to Magic Kingdom a lot, so I think yeah. that's why I'm like. I, I just remember being angry. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Obviously, the ferry boats, they get people really angry. People oh, fight on the ferry boats yeah. a lot. I mean, I'd be fighting over the monorails because <laughs> that last monorail out, I'm getting on it. I'm sorry. It's yeah. like the Titanic lifeboat. I'm getting on that. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had to walk before because both of the monorails were down. That's the so, problem all the time. <laughs> yeah. So I, I did have to walk like to Grand Floridian and then... It's magical. Walk to Polynesian and then walk to TTC from there. That happened. Uh, that wasn't fun. But, uh, yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't ready to fight anybody. I'm, I'm I, not willing to throw hands at the Magic Kingdom. I am. But, yeah, I know. I know. That's why I stay away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, finally, it says that they are, are planning to expand, allegedly. Uh, there have Ooh. been several rumors from insiders mm -hmm. suggesting there will be a phase two of the park featuring a few additional attractions that will be built almost as soon as the park opens in 2025. This most notably includes an expansion for Super Nintendo World revolving around the Luigi's Mansion franchise. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think that's a smart move. I still, I'm hmm. still saying, come on, let's do some Metroid. Let me do the Metro. They got time. They got time. Uh -huh. A couple years. Uh, another large attraction said to be part of this early expansion is a creature from the Black Lagoon indoor boat ride. They if, need this so bad. If that's true, I will be so Give happy. me a chill boat ride, man. I don't, right? I don't mind if you want to make me spin every now and then or look at projections every now and then that simulate motion. But, like, just give me a chill, dark boat yeah. ride. Give me let a me Navi. Just have a good, let me just relax, man. Yeah, I want like a Sinbad or a small world. Give me a monster small world. Why do you That's think fine. everyone wants like the most like intense? Ex we got to have some well, downtime, yeah. man. Uh, the boats, uh, you know, I don't want to be blasted by water on a boat. I just want to be on a boat. And just I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, that Navi River Journey vibe, except maybe longer. Yeah. <laughs> Navi River Journey, a little short. Um, you know, give me something like that. I like this, and I like the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. That's a good little franchise. Everybody loves boats. Creature, <laughs> right? I yeah. mean, he's so nice. I'm hoping he's part yeah. of horror. Nights Give him a this popcorn year. bucket. <gasps> yes, I would love that. I can already picture it. Any kind of like <laughs> sea monster guy. I don't want to. I don't really need a, a wolf man. I don't need a mummy. I don't need a Dracula. I don't need a Frankenstein's monster. monster. <laughs> just yeah. Just give me that one. 
I, I think so. I, I like that. I, I feel like I saw a purse out in Universal Studios Hollywood that was um, Creature's head, and I'm like, I could see that as a popcorn bucket. I'd love it. We are bordering on the longest, probably we've already surpassed being the longest podcast in the history of this um, of this iteration of the WDW News Today podcast. And we've barely even got started, but we've gone over so much. <laughs> we've covered so much. I know. Annie. I want to get your final thoughts because I, like everyone else, am excited about Epic Universe. But I want to know if you think it's the Disney killer that some of the people on the internet think it is, or if you think, you know, like we said, maybe it's good for everybody. I really think it's good for everybody. I think Disney's going to win in the long run uh, because more people will come here for Epic Universe, and they will go to Disney as well. You're not going to come all the way to Orlando and and not go to Disney, whether you've been whether it's been ten years or a year since you went. You're you're going to probably put some Disney days into your trip. But I really think that people are going to come here for Epic Universe. Yeah. I think it's going to bring a lot more people in. It's going to be great for Universal, but. It's going to be great for Disney too. I think I think that's a a possible outcome of all this, and I think Disney is probably smart to not respond with something immediately that is going to compete with the opening of Epic Universe. I think they're better off if they stagger it a little bit, and maybe some of this like Beyond. Well, they got Tiana's Bayou Adventure coming soon, but like this Beyond Big Thunder Mountain, like all this Blue yeah. Sky stuff they're talking about. Permits have been filed at Animal Kingdom to do something that looks like it could be pretty big. Yeah. Um, all this stuff may be opening just a little bit later so that you stagger this and maybe, you know, this summer they're coming and going to Epic Universe and next summer they're coming and then maybe they hit Disney and next summer they're coming to go to Disney and maybe they'll hit this new thing you got, you know. Yeah. I don't know. People smarter than me are are making the decisions. I like to criticize some of these people because some of the people that they've had making decisions in the past at Disney are morons. But by and large, I think their big decisions are strategically thought out. So I don't think that they're quaking in their boots at the Epic Universe thing. I'm sure that we'll have a response. It might be discounts. It might be some sort of special pass. It might be some sort of promotions. But I don't think they're going to let this moment just blow by them and be like, oh, well, looks like we're going out of business. Looks like Universal's (laughs) taking over. I don't think that's going to happen. No. If there's one thing they're good at, it is um, taking money out of people's pockets. So they're not going to just not know how to do that anymore because a new theme park opened. And I think it might be an opportunity for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We all win. When the theme parks compete, we win. Because they're competing for our money and we're getting experiences. So I'm okay with them having – you know, war. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, if, if look, if Universal, <laughs> if Universal wasn't in town, a Disney ticket might be like three hundred dollars now. You know what I mean? They got to They got People do compare yeah. it. Often now, people don't realize this. Often, Universal is the first to strike with a price jack too. They were the first to crack the hundred dollar barrier. Remember that when Universal's like, you know, everyone's like, I think the tickets are all like ninety seven dollars, ninety eight dollars. Everyone's like, who's going to do it? Who's going to be the first one? To crack a hundred dollars, Universal's like, "I'll do it, Leroy <laughs> Jenkins." You know they did it, and then Disney, like, you know, thirty seconds later, is like, "Oh yeah, us too." Yeah, all right. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think you're right though. I think when they're competing, we win. Yeah. Because uh, especially when you talk about value and things like that, you're like, "Hey, they got this new park. This one costs this much money. Oh, well, if we're gonna try to buffer that, why don't we lower our prices? They're not gonna lower the price. Why don't we well, come up with a promotion?" Yeah. That competes with that, right? Why don't we come up with something that is a three or four day thing? So maybe they're going to come play at Epic Universe for one day or two days. But let's keep them from staying for a week. Let's give them a reason to come to Disney. Yeah, it's natural that they would do something like that. So um, the idea uh, that Disney is just standing by and not doing anything and just like Universal's lap in the field is a pretty like to me a pretty basic kind of. Um, visceral response to something that you haven't thought through all the way. I think, um, you know, I think it's great. I think it is an opportunity for Universal to go, like, look what we can do. Look what we can do. We're not just going to make yeah. things that spin and have projections, even though it's, uh, you know, mostly things that spin and do pro- – you know, there's some there's some cool stuff to do here, I think. There's only – if you look at it, 12 attractions, it's not that many. I think there's 13. But 12 or – I think, I think the circle. Well, well let's, is let's a, do it. 
Uh, Untrainable Dragon is going to be a stage show. Yeah, it's not really. It counts let's as talk about attractions. Rides. Let's just talk about attractions. Things I mean, that are listed on Wikipedia as attractions but versus I think things. Those, are, I think those are attractions. Well, so. I did list Beauty and the Beast sing along as an attraction. Yeah. Fantastic right, is an so attraction. We'll do That's that. How they scam then we'll me. say uh, How to Train Your Dragon is going to have uh, three rides and one show. So four. Four. Le, Le Cirque Arcanus and Harry Potter and the Battle at Ministry of Magic. Six. That's two. Yep. So that's six total. Then we get to eight, Monsters Unchained and Curse of the Werewolf. Yeah. And then Mario Kart Bowser Challenge, Yoshi Adventure, and Minecart Madness. And then Starfall Racers, Constellation Carousel, and the Leaky Diaper Splash Pad. And kind of 14. 14. So 14 <laughs> things to do. Astronomica. I don't <laughs> I mean, I feel like, I mean, if you count a show, you got to count a Splash Pad. 13, 14 ish. 13, 14 ish. in there. Things yeah. to do, yeah. right? Um. Hollywood, what does Hollywood Studios have? Eight or nine, basically, rides, and then probably some other things they call attractions that are shows or experiences. Um, you know, Epcot a little bit more, Magic Kingdom a lot more, Animal Kingdom a few more. So I don't think in terms of the size and scope that the CEO bragged about originally when this was announced that this is a Disney killer. I don't think it is. I don't think – I don't agree with this statement that because – and. A universe is larger than a world that this is somehow going to outpace Disney in terms of scope mm-hmm. and grandeur. Uh, but I think this is a great choice for us to have as locals and for people coming on their vacation to see something new. Mm-hmm. Because you got to get sick of seeing a new stuff, right? A new major theme park in, a, in, a, in the theme park capital of the world. Yeah. You're, I mean, even if you don't care about Universal, you're going to be curious. You're going to want to know what's in there. Oh, take I, my money. I, you know. I, I'm there. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm sure I will go there. It's going to take a good four, five, six visits before I'm like feel like it's my, like my. You know, you go to the parks now. You're like, it's like my, my park. It's my yeah. backyard. It's you know, this is where I go to play. And sometimes in my yard, I like to go to the Universal side of my yard and and go do this and that. And sometimes I like to go to Animal Kingdom and do that and this. You know, there's room for everybody. And I think all we're doing is making things better for Orlando. Yeah. And for us as a news organization. Yeah. More stuff to cover. Yeah, right? Because let me tell you, I'm going to know that park inside and out when it opens. Not everybody's going to agree with me, right? I, Some people have decided that Universal good guy, Disney bad guy, or Disney good guy, Universal bad guy. I'm kind of – I'll blur the line, right? I, I go to Disney more often than Universal. I have APs at both, so um, I see the merits of going to both of them. If you ask my girlfriend, she's like, I guess we'll go to Universal. She's not like – yeah, and she loves Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. But she's not, you know, she's not like when we go to Disney when she's like, yeah, let's go do this and let's go do that. Some people are u- universal people and some people are Disney people. Yeah. I happen to be just kind of like a themed entertainment person. I lean Disney because it's closer to my house. It's easier. It's more accessible to me as a local. But Universal has its charms and it's taking on a huge project that I think that we all should be excited about. Any closing thoughts for you, Annie? Annie? I would say that if you are a Disney person, give Epic Universe a chance because I think you'll be surprised. I just was going to say I was born and raised as a Disney person and would never go to Universal, and I got a job there. And the first time I walked in and looked at that park, I thought, what was I missing this whole time? I just I couldn't believe what I didn't know existed. So... If you're diehard Disney and you hate Universal, that's fine. But I really think you should give it a chance, just because I is think it, it's gonna. I think it's gonna blow people away. I mean, isn't that why people go to Disney World instead of like even people that live next to Disneyland or may, maybe live close to you know that that live in Europe? They come to Disney World because there's a size and scope, and you can see things you haven't seen before. Yeah. There's a lot of undiscovered stuff. You can come to look. I don't care how many times you've been to Disney World. There's probably stuff you haven't do, done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have talked about experiences that Tom has never done. And Tom's gone to Disney World thousands of times. Yeah. You know, so to add some elements of wonder and excitement, I think from the hotels to the lands to the attractions, I think it's a great uh, it's a great thing. So uh, we want to thank you for joining us on this weird outlier live episode of the WDW News Today podcast. We went on a little longer than normal. We're at two, uh, two and a half hours. Wow. Time flies. Real? 
Time flies when you're talking with Annie. <laughs> Annie, I really want to thank you for your time, and we thank you for watching. Uh, please give us your ideas and your comments and uh, let us know. Uh, try to be nice. Don't call me an idiot. Like, I know people like to. So. Me either. And no one's going to call <laughs> Annie an idiot. All right. We'll see you next time on a WDW News Today podcast. And you say, see you real soon. See you real soon. That's what Tom says. Yeah. Oh. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>